Can we officially welcome you all to the House of Reawakening Minds tonight? Happy Holy Day, Moors. And let's welcome Grand Sheik Tashari Bay and our online Facebook family. Come on. Come on. Can we all do better than that? And this is for the people who are listening too, because this is really key. You all know that breath is really, and the art of breathing is really spirituality. And the priesthood pretty much makes people think that praying and worshiping is spirituality, while they themselves know different. Spirituality is breathing and the art of breathing for the purpose of cleansing yourselves or pretend or preparing them to energize to bring out the memory that your mother gave you that's coded in your DNA. And that's the truth. And it is nothing else. Are we clear? I don't care what anybody tells you, and I suggest you challenge what I just said to you too. And I know you know I'm telling the truth because truth has a ring to it. Also does too. And those who have a sense of divine order know the sound of them both. Right. The reason we're in the problems that we're in is because the very people that we've trusted are really in bed with Rome. And it's uncomfortable for us. It's been uncomfortable for generations, and we've been sacrificing generation after generation after generation and marching and praying all over the place, and things have been getting worse. And the reason they're getting worse is because we have wrong information. You know, it's like this, if two and two is four here, then two and two is four there, and somewhere else, in the sky, in the bottom of the ocean. And when somebody talks about it needs to be reinterpreted, you know, put some shades on and some 3D glasses and try to see who you're looking at. And that's what we really need to start doing. We need to start having the courage to challenge things and not accept things on face value. Our failures and our miseries and our poverty and our broken families is enough evidence for you to recognize that you have the wrong information. But anyway, I thank you all for coming out here to House of Reawakening Minds. And we're gonna go over this treatise, Horace Greeley. How many of you are familiar with the Mummers Party in Philadelphia? That was a quick up and down. <laughs> no, hands up. Hands up. I want you all to look around the room. Now, remember this baby sitting here? His baby playing. And he's two. It's like that. And um, people always walk around and having meetings and rallies and talk about how they love the children and self esteem and everything. And yet they're so willing to go along with BS and watch generation after generation fall apart, be on drugs, be dead or in jail, and sit around and talk about salvation what? and prayers. What? And they'll always cost you. Their gods are always broke. And then here comes the next generation with less knowledge. Prep, prep for destruction. Everybody talk about love and God and Allah and Jesus and Moses and Muhammad. And they know the Lord, they know the Bible, they know the Quran. And they're always giving you stuff that when you test it, it don't work for you. So that means, in divine law, it means either our concepts are wrong or the information we have is fraudulent. You know, I say, well, if I drop this thing in, in the magnetic field on the earth, you know, push and pull and stuff, and it'll fall and stuff like that, it's probably gravity like that, right? You know? And if that didn't happen, look for a trick or something like that, because that's not how this planet works. You get the point? If it stays there, either I'm doing something, you know, with some magnet wand or something like that. So the rule, so I say this, let's trust, let's trust divine law. Let's trust basic divine principles and measure things accordingly, all right? The Europeans call themselves white people, you're right. 
officially. Eighteen fifty four, eighteen sixty three, that was the solidification of the official operations of Europeans claiming to be white people, which is a noble title. So write that down and please don't forget because if you don't get this clear, a lot of other things that you need to know won't work for you. Are we clear? Because remember the words that come out your mouth actually have power. And one of the keys as to why Rome is still in power is because our people keep calling him white man. And when you cast spells, they work. And that's the real truth. And so what we want you to be clear on is how to spell and stop casting spells against yourself. So in the same way we're telling you that you're not Negro, black, and color, as the Prophet Nubadrali presented to us, Bring us back to the consciousness of the real history and the real truth of the bloodline, you must also recognize you have to stop calling him white man. Because when you do, you call him sovereign. Are we clear? And when you call him sovereign, what does a sovereign have the right to do? The sovereign has the power of God. And then when he exercises, y'all want to march all around the place and, and talk about he's a racist, when racist is the human species which indicates that some people can't read because they don't know the true meaning of words. And so they're casting spells again that neutralize their former argument. In other words, you start a legitimate argument, then you cast a code word spell on it and you neutralize your position. This is what keeps happening to you. And it, you know, it can't be emphasized enough why we emphasize to you fundamental Edelman degree. And make sure that at least the children get it because we're so contaminated, the elders are so contaminated and compromised and worried about their J-O-B, their Job, 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 that Rome will take everything from them. They sacrifice their babies to pretend that they love in Jesus, to pretend that they're doing something spiritual while all they see is misery, all the children see is misery. All the children, as soon as they get about 12, 13 years old, they got worried about getting shot in their back by the commercial mercenaries that liars keep telling them are lawmen when they're actually commercial mercenaries working for Rome. Members of the gangs of New York that made contracts with Illuminati, the negative side of Illuminati. You understand Illuminati principle itself is not a negative. It was like fire and water. How you use it is the issue. It's likewise, is, is uh, knowledge. Just like the Bible says, the sun shines on the good as well as the evil. It's, it's for you to understand that the powers are neutral. Your knowledge about them and how they're used is what you need to know the difference about. And they've been using it negatively on you, and you've been helping them with your Negro language that they gave you, encouraged by black leaders that they have assigned from their Negro universities that they set up in the early 1800s to pick leaders that stick in your community, that get you all marching all around the place under the 14th Amendment, making you all think it meant citizenship, when it actually means Christian stock. And we're not talking about divine law. And that's, again, how the corporate U.S. 
has been operating, particularly since the commercial war conflict around 1860 that they falsely tagged as a civil war. It wasn't a civil war. It was a commercial mercenary war. All right, so keep that in mind, all right? So the Whigs party, this is a short, that's a short for Whig and War, all right? All right? So we're going to go into um, Horace Greeley in short. They don't teach you too much about this in school because they don't really want you to know your history and your political tie here. You know what a wig is, y'all? He does. You know what a wig is? Huh? Damn, y'all come silent. Oh, no. <laughs> Does anybody, maybe I guess the baby. Okay. <laughs> Probably do better. Where's he hiding? A wig is a mocking of the moors when they wear the wig. He's back there. <clears throat> we should have bought one of them curly wigs over here. <laughs> What's up, baby? What's your name, main man? My name's Todd. Give me five. You know what a wig is? Can you tell us what a wig is? Hmm? You know like when somebody puts somebody else's hair on their head? Or some fake hair on their head? That's a wig, right? There's a cute little guy. We want to make sure that he doesn't grow up subject to the Negro acts and the Negro codes. That's right. While pretending to be knowledgeable and pretending to be spiritual because somebody tells them Jesus, God, Allah, Moses, Muhammad without any substance behind it. You get the point? Huh? All right. Because we ain't having no more slaves and we ain't having no more nigger problems. That's right. Wigs that the Europeans put on even to this day, particularly in Albion, that you call England. That's Albion. Write that down. A L B I O N. Albion, from which the monetary operations on Earth planet have their administrative origin. Not their origin, their administrative origin. Are we clear? Yeah. For all Western, what they call Occidental governments, i.e., European colonial operations on Earth planet, Gaia. Are we clear? Their power source after the fall of the Moors is why the sun never rises and the sun never sets on the British Empire because they inherited the Moorish Empire after you fell. Are we clear? The fact that it encompasses both sides of the planet and the north and the south gives rise to why people don't want you to know the real history. Because you're the target of design ignorance as well as genocide. Because you're the heirs to the world's largest estate. So your mistreatment is not because they don't like the complexion of your skin. Your mistreatment is because you're descendants of the ancient Canaanite mole bites. You're the direct descendants of the ancient civilization on Earth planet. And it has been down to the German, Dutch, Albion hybrids after you fell, which is the problem on Earth planet ever since, with all Asiatic nations and all African nations suffering at the hands of Romans. Romans, Albions, Europeans, one and the same. Are we clear? Don't hate them, understand them. Are we clear? Clear. But above all, know yourself. Now, the other point is, when you get the idea, and some people promote it, that the Europeans don't understand your plight, or don't understand your feelings, or you gotta make, convince him that you're somebody and all that stuff. If somebody feeds you them kind of lines, that person's working for Rome. Guaranteed. And themselves know the truth. Every so-called black leader guy that y'all 
been handed in these last 50 to 100 years in secret or basis. Got a Moorish vest, dressed in jewels. They belong to a lodge that learns the real history. And they spend thousands and thousands of notes and they take blood oaths of death to Rome not to reveal the secrets. And they usually give them a church or parish and Susie to take to the Bahamas with Jesus' half every year. And they come out and always talk about Jesus and everything and you think that they love Jesus. And there's no J in Hebrew, no J in Aramaic. Are we clear? It's not wrong Jesus, but Jesus is the password. You understand not to be rejected, to be understood, are we clear? So when someone presents you with a lesson of Jesus, they're giving you a groundwork to take you into deep chambers of knowledge. So it's not a negative, are we clear? However, if they don't take you beyond that, look out. Because they're getting ready to feed on you. And this is what they've been doing. This is why Prophet Nogdrali came to stop that cycle. Are we clear? But he also told you the half has not been told. If he told you everything, you go back to sleep. So we're giving you some of the other half. Are we clear? Which is why some grand cheeks and some cheekuses and some other people is mad at Taji guy. Because once you start learning these things, you will be followers of no one. Are we, are we clear? Yes. clear? Our intentions is that you are the followers of no one. That's right. Are we clear? Yes. But that when you see somebody doing good, no matter who it is, that you can aid them in doing good, and they can aid you in doing good, and we can build something together for ourselves and the next generation. Are we clear? Clear. That's our missionary work. That's what we're doing. That's why you're here. So I'm, I'm going to make myself very clear to you because a lot of people try to rep misrepresent what we're doing. That's right. And so that's why we tell you when you come here, bring pens and papers because we don't play and we don't want you play. We, we can play after, though. All right? So let's talk a little bit about Horace Greeley. This is also on your flash drive, but I, but I also recognize that, you know, constant, you know, like when we come here at the House of Reawakening Minds, you notice that we ask questions and, and see how many people raise their hands? Because what it indicates is where are we? You know, what are we doing? And is what we do, or is, it, is what we're doing, is it effective? Do you recognize what you're being given? Do you value it? Do you value yourself? Do you value your life? Do you value these babies or are you going to continue to keep pretending? I'll say this to you. You don't have too much more time to get this stuff together. So I'm backtracking. Because when we start having effects and I start seeing the trolls come out, that's one of the signals that Rome is pissed. And they're going to try to block. And they got all the institutions, they got all the Negro leader guys and leader girls, and they're gonna come out in droves, blogging, YouTube. trolling, BSing, and distracting. But, know this for sure. You give people enough reference points, and if they will pay attention, if they will pay attention, they will liberate themselves, and that will be their protection from the trolls. It'll be protection from those who have deceived you for so many generations. It'll also give you a solid foundation that no priesthood, no matter what house they come from, from the mosque, temples, churches, or whatever club they claim that they're part of will no longer be able to deceive you. Are we clear? Are we clear? In order to liberate humanity, one of the things of our assignment is we must get the leeches of the priesthood off their back. But we can't do it. You must do it. And you have to have a certain amount of knowledge to recognize it because you won't do it if you don't have a certain amount of knowledge because you keep tying them to the divine. They are not divine. They're parasites. Matter of fact, they're the source of the evils on the planet. Absolutely. But because they've been most trusted, this is why they've gotten away with this for all these generations, for all these centuries. However, let's deal with some of the politics of the priesthood. And I want to remind you, as we've reminded you before, politicians, prostitutes, 
priests, all together, all parasites. There's very few amongst any of them that has any honor or any, any integrity, although some do. Usually, if they're there for a short time, they're contaminated thereafter. Because usually if they don't go into the contamination, they get rid of them. Are we clear? Yeah. So, Horace Greeley and the Wigamore Party. Cutting it short, the Europeans representing to the world the sovereign powers of the overthrown Moorish Empire take the imperial divan and they change it They'll simply change the names. They didn't really change the order. Are we clear? Right. So the executive government for the United States and the Parliament, etc., in England, etc., they're all reflections of the imperial divan, except that they take it to the negative. Are we clear? Are we clear? They wear the wig. They wear the wig to imitate the Moors who they defeated. And that's why they're called the Wigamore Party. But to help tie or disconnect you from the history, this is why they take the Moor off, M-O-R-E, and then just say Whigs Party. Are we clear? clear? So when you look in England land, and when you see the high magistrates, you'll see them even to this day will don a wig. That's tradition. Are we clear? Time period, the early to late 1800s, geographical or territorial location, northwest of Exxon, northwest Africa, North America, the North Gate. Subject matter, Horace Greeley and the Wigamore Party, commonly referred to as the Whigs. This treatise should be reviewed with one having actual cognizance Excuse me. Many of you have probably already gone over this. You've gone over your fast drive. This tradition should um, be reviewed with one having actual cognizance about the Congress for the United States of America measured by Constitution principles and limited delegated authority adjourning Sina D on day 10 of May 18 and 61. All right, and in actuality, the first part of the plot was actually March the 22nd, 27th, which I'll insert in this, but this is when they, they, they really came out with their BS. Yeah. All right, so March the 27th, yeah. they did the Cena deal, and they were listed often with some as May. Are we, are we clear? This is actually a coup d'etat. Are we clear? Because on the pop on the on, the, on, the, on the web on, online everywhere it will, it, it's referencing March twenty seventh. The different yes. the dates are. Mike. No, this is this is when they came out, and and one of the things that I that I that I'm going to uh, insert that on this is because that was secret. Oh, you, you understand? I got it. Well, because I recognize that will cause confusion, I'm going to Maybe. modify that. But I'm just telling you why. Now, Horace Greeley, a European son, Occidental. So when you're talking about Europeans or the hybrids, they're Occidental. When you're talking about Asiatics and Africans, they're Oriental. So get used to that so that you can understand world politics when you're making certain references in anthropological books. All right? and in political venues. All right, it's important because you must, when I say you, I'm talking about us generally, start demonstrating more competence in relationship to what your relationship is to both this land and to the political platforms. Are we clear? Sure. It's, it's very important. So, he was born of his mother, at the land territory corporately known as Amherst, New Hampshire, at North America. His natural birth degree was day three of February 1811. 
The record shows that he passed four and died on day 29 of November 1872. His political allegiance, body politic, association, and citizenship jurisdiction was the United States Republic of North America, being a constitution, pardon me, constitution oriented social political body politic association, having a republican form of government founded upon Muslim law and functioning at North America Al Marak, the North Gate. Greeley became an apprentice for a printer located at Pulteney. Vermont, whereas he served in that capacity as an itinerant journeyman printer. He held that position for about four years thereafter. Horace Greeley was a very powerful, insightful, influential, and dedicated newspaper editor for the New York Tribune. I'm sure you all heard about the New York Tribune before. Right? of which he was the inspired founder. His impacting tri uh, Tribune newspaper was commonly referred to by the people as the Tribune and was among the more highly respected publications in the country. This plenary newsprint was also considered a premier newspaper during that era of time, and otherwise and saw the aspect of Greeley's business management of that publication is that the weekly that the weekly produced issues of the New York Tribune were distributed widely and by mail. Consequently, it became the most widely distributed and widely read newspaper of its time. Accentuating his capacity to influence public opinion, really also wrote articles and editorials for several other newspapers and publications. And so we can see and relate that his thoughts and philosophies had well-established forums for advancing and for molding informational, social, and political opinions via those advantageous, supportive, and sound distribution networks. Conclusively, and without doubt, that said access that our cars really had to those broad and meritorious communications venues gave to him and created for him multiple default opportunities to have unrestricted access to the grand arena of social and political developments for instituting cultural modifications and reformations at North America. As for Horace Greeley's opinionated politics in some ways and manners, we can also associate his broadly accepted influences with purposeful, well-designed, and deliberated social engineering mechanisms. This poignant area of his personal and social interest was clearly exercised via that noted, respected, and expanding influence upon the thoughts and actions of others. And with particular emphasis, we will address some of those vital social and political acts and issues associated with him as reflected within that context, Greeley and the United States Congress. As we know, the Congress for the United States is, excuse me, is that branch of government from whence bills, laws, and legislation originate. So keep that in mind, you all. In accord with constitutional delegated mandate, acknowledge accordingly. The quickly changing nature and social political character reflecting upon the compromised Asiatic nation and of course upon and across the land as European dominance became more apparent. Many of these inevitable changes and adjustments were due to amalgamation and by default the slow but steady social and political blendings made and developing by way of the nation's revolutionary atmosphere and colonized social political status. Is there no wonder as to why the continental Americans have taken on the socially attributed name, the Great Melting Pot? Unavoidably, there was and would come to be a congruence of peoples interfacing at North America. With that very significant observation taken into account, as a social and political canvas, also note that Horace Greeley was very active and influential within the national and political arena of the colonized country. 
Also consider the fact that Greeley served as a congressman for New York, though briefly. And as a state of events and activities motivated his complex interest, he zealously campaigned as a candidate for the Democratic Party. And also, at a later date, for the Liberal Republican <coughs> Party. It's important for you to notice history because most of our people think that the Asiatics at North America were Democrats. No, no. They were Republicans until they sold out and we've been catching hell ever since. Mm -hmm. Ulysses Simpson Grant wins presidency 1872. Greeley's passionate political aspirations and ambitions by social necessity expanded with his bid for and participation in the presidential election campaign of 1872. However, Greeley lost that intense presidential election by a landslide to Ulysses S. Grant, another intriguing issue of particular and peculiar note is the meddling fact that Horace Greeley, after losing the presidential election, succumbed to a myriad of other pressures and losses in his life. As fate would have it, Greeley passed for and died in November of that same year, just weeks before the electoral uh, party voting was cast. This was an untimely event, to say the least. These and other noted and unsettling events should give the reader a little more insight into the political atmosphere engulfing the country during the 1800s and paint an overview or clearer picture of the man and of his interfacing with others in that time cycle. With your mind's eye, place Horace Greeley into the transmuting social, political, and aggregate context of the 1800s time cycle at North America, conjoining that with vibratory energy within the nature of his political bent. Thereby, we may intuit and with abstract imagery apply insight and focus a little closer, taking the opportunity to access a more panoramic coverage and interpretation of some aspects of his life and of things and people around him. Thus, we might be enabled to share some enlightening views and perspectives as most people would generally have seen him historically. At this juncture, we will address some of these aspects and his life, of his life, pardon me. And so the, the curious among us might ask, how do and to what effect does these four stated times and issues involving ours really? and the Wigan War Party or the Whigs affect us, the Moors, Orientals, Aboriginals? the natural peoples of the Northwest Territories, lands in these contemporary days. With, the, with investigative research and the evidentiary reasoning applied with insight and with critical analysis, we shall definitively see and recognize many observable political, social, and economic associations of and between historical personages, facts, political motives, conditions, and events. Governor William Seward and journalist Thurwood Weed. The European sons, William Seward and Thurwood Weed, were very important figures during that area, era. Pardon me. These men had major tributary uh, influence in Horace Greeley's strong and then binding association with the Whigs. Now, William Seward was governor for the Al-Moroccan territory deemed as New York State Republic at that time. Thurlow Weed was a highly qualified journalist with whom Greeley worked regularly on progressive issues and on formulating governmental policies for the Union State Society. All of these dynamics and interchanges must also be, re be viewed with the knowledge that this particular error concurrently involved Abraham Lincoln's pre-ascent and eventual election and ascent to the office of the presidency for the United States colonial operations at North America, Amorak. Primal to the social politics associated with and attributed to Horace Greeley, we shall also note the strong and passionate positions he held in support of European colonial operations at the North Gate, Turtle Island. While one is reading this treatise, remember, 
that the masses have little to no common access to Privy Council Gnostic wisdom and history, nor do they have open access to the adeptus philosophies, pardon me, uh, yeah, adeptus philosophies, period. The masses in general have minimal luc lucidity of the real political realms as revealed to the more erudite. No doubt those advantaged groups of people include those holding higher political positions of administrative government. Do not therefore limit your thoughts to the focus of the times, pressures and concerns among the European sons and daughters which are fused in memory about the long-standing injustices that had come to contaminate and to corrupt the once noble Moorish Muslim order of government, truth be told. The original federal government was Moorish, and many of the rulers of the Moorish nation had long since fallen away from their high cultural principles, mm -hmm. which are strongly rooted in isonomy. Also consider the other prima facie and default opportunities placed before the consciousness of the rebelling European sons and daughters in their relationship to cultivating unrestful inquisition propagation devised for the Europeans' own economic, social, and political benefits. When you look at this history, you understand some of the questionaries. Some of the questions in the questionnaire. Keep in mind that the powers, excuse me. Keep in mind that the powers and institutions of the Moorish nation were in a state of steady decline. Observably, some of the more common primal vandal and vandalism opportunities and considerations were availed to Europeans. Among these involved the political acts of escheatage, displacement, and of European colonial expansionism in the Western Hemisphere, the Maghreb, Morocco, the most extreme West. To that effect, consider the strengthening of the Romans' red man's operative Unum Sanctum Bulla, and their other collective inquisition church bullets that have been and are functioning as their conquest-oriented doctrine of discovery, etc. Horace Greeley was cons uh, consistently and fervently encouraging his fellow European sons and brethren to accelerate and assert their European colonial directive the doctrine of discovery activities and practices among the political activities was the ongoing and strategic quest for solidifying European domination and expansion onto and over the Western lands, the North Gate, North America. The associated writings, meetings, and the said political propagation also involved the clever formulating of legal processes for instituting feudal law systems deemed for hypothecating the Western parcels. The Western parcels? You see why they took parcel out the Constitution and probably did part and parcel, yep. and then they changed it to partial. Yep. So now you, you understand some of the sellout, because they're going to disconnect you from the land. That's, right. That's why they made a talk about for publishing the proper letter. Parcels of lands and estates being the airship possessions of the aboriginals moors of North America. One of the more popular and far-reaching quotes, or shall we say, the best known and adopted motto, quote unquote, associated with Horace Greeley, was the following, go west, young man, and grow up with the country. Now you understand why the mummers prayed they assemble at six or more street in Philadelphia, and then they go west, and they turn 90 degrees on Broad Street, and the parade ends at the battleground, Y'all ain't never noticed that the, that the city hall is designed just like a mosque? How many, how many of y'all noticed that? Raise your hand, don't say anything. Raise your hand. Oh, y'all slow. Let me tell you, you better catch up. Because the world already knows if we're going to do anything, if you're going to do anything about preserving your rights, you're going to have to know the real history here. Which is one of the reasons why I, I, I chose to bring this out. Because a lot of conversations we, we're having with people and a lot of questions people ask as they call in, myself, Dr. Nyila, Dee, and others, keeps indicating either you're not studying the stuff we're giving you or you really don't have a library home. So, and you need to really fix that. You need to get serious because people are, are already plotting to eliminate you all in case you didn't know it. 
You know, if it wasn't for the Manchurians, you'd see a lot more stuff out here that would make you very uncomfortable. There's a lot of stuff going on in the background that if you knew about it also would make you uncomfortable. So I suggest that y'all get on your horse and start riding. I'm serious. And it's another reason I brought this out because I, I can smell them. They are really getting nervous. You understand? Because remember, the source of their power is your ignorance. Are we clear? I can't emphasize it enough. The source of their power is your ignorance. And the source of the free sandwiches that a lot of your black leaders and sheiks and other people are getting is to keep you ignorant while pretending to love Prophet Nubu Dwali. I repeat, while pretending to love Prophet Nubu Dwali. This is why when we give you all this information, they're, they, they're the first ones to come out and attack. Why? Because it means they ain't going to get free sandwiches at your expense. So they, look, they know as long as you don't have a background in real history that you get caught in clubism and who you like and who you don't like, who got the pretty suit on, and who got the Lexus. Y'all need to understand that attacks on Prophet Nobu Ali is attacks on your estate. And I think that a lot of people don't get that. They look at Nobu Ali doing some great thing and he's an interesting person in history. He came to restore your lost estate. When they attack him, they're attacking you. You better get it through your heads. Just because you didn't know the history don't, don't change the reality. But the fact that you don't know the history is what makes them safe. That's actually their shield. That's actually their armor. Anyway, go west, young man, and grow up with the country. It ain't their country. They talk about the corporation that's taking over your country. The country is Morocco. The corporation is the United States Service Corporation because we have treaties with Britain. And they've been feigning that corporation that Lincoln bankrupted as the country ever since the Civil War. And apparently the people start believing it. And this is why I think that a lot of times the concepts that we're presenting to you, you don't, you don't get it because you can't get it out of your head that the United States is not a country. It's a private corporation registered in France. You've been conquered. You're under European colonial operations. Are we clear? You're not under racism. You're under European colonial operations. Don't forget that. Every time you forget it, you will not understand the politics. Are we clear? Keep in mind that this exerting and heavily promoted pronouncement was directed to the European male sons on a large scale. As for bringing some other insightful and desired information to the attention of the directly descended and primogeniture heirs of the Moabites, being the dark olive moors, moors of the Western Hemisphere, we shall also note that the foresaid statement, go west young man, must be viewed as a firm and directive political influence command which in its character and in nature is actually an escheat motto. Write that down. Is the Europeans an escheat motto? Now don't be sitting around talking about racism. Talk about the escheat motto. Everybody else knows it but you, including your nigger leaders, who keep getting well funded by you and the Europeans. Now, the escheat model, this should not ever be forgotten of its true purpose. It must also be emphasized that the Go West Young Man motto and its long-term effects should never be minimized of its import. The same shall never ever be looked at as being unrelated to the negating conditions experienced by the subjugated Moors, nor viewed as being ordinary or trivial. Greeley's Go West Young Man and the multifarious consequences related to it have much to do with the contemporary social engineering operations executed at North America. The policies rendered these operations of, yeah, pardon me, are laced with genocide, pinage, arbitrary, poverty, 
gentrification, and negatively structured politics deemed to destroy and to distort, infecting the lives of Aboriginal peoples. Are we clear? Clear. Clear, man. The policy set forth here that you see right now, if you take the timeline and move it to today, you'll see the politics, even with the mainstream media, is right here. It is actually, they, they haven't even changed it. But this is the strength origin. And you need to know the politics so that you don't sit around and think, I don't know why I didn't put it in the newspaper. All the media is controlled. That's right. To make sure that you keep, that you stay in the Christian black codes and your Negro leaders keep telling you that you're colored people and people of color and Negroes and they get paid off and you be thinking they love Jesus and Allah. I bet you they got nice cars, nice suits, and Susie. Yes, with Jesus' hair. And you all keep supporting them and then talking about you love your babies. That's why you keep sacrificing your generations. That's why they murder people like Malcolm who find out they don't buy, they won't sell out. So they murder them. It's not just Europeans, it's Asiatics. You're the heirs to the world's largest estate. They don't want this information out. Make it clear to yourself. You're not here just because we got good food. Yeah, we got good food over here too. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so these characteristics have come to formulate and to regulate heavily and deliberately flawed and artificially manufactured social economic policies and demo politics. That's why they always talk about democracy. It's a platform for demons. All of these people are Satanists. They, they hide behind Jesus, and they hide behind Allah, and Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings will not be, and they'll take your sandwiches and kill your babies and eat some of them too. Y'all might think that that's far-fetched, but that's don't true. think that when you go to fast food houses that those two burgers for one price ain't beef alone. <laughs> There's also kangaroo meat, horse meat, um, they don't, some pork, and the babies that they brought from around the country, the ones that they kill, the children that they kill to steal their organs, that's where the rest of it goes. And you know for surety that them cows don't grow that fast for them to keep up all these, every other corner, these spots with these competing places. You're eating human flesh. Yes. That's being. Uh, it's why you people get diseases and stuff too. That's right. being implemented as, as far as. Like it's being going on. Demon, it's being. Yeah. It's, it's part of their the demonology. The, de the Democratic Party <laughs> is a political party <laughs> set up in 1861 to institute forced servitude and slavery at North America and to set up a platform for impostorship. This is where people are trained to pretend to be legitimate politicians when they're really members of the Circle Church in London. Circle Church is, Circle Church and the Chancery is, is really the, the uh, Knights of the Order of Christ, as now called the Knights of Templar, of which Donald Trump is a Knights Templar. Doesn't mean that everything he's doing is intended to be negative, because he's trying to fix some of this stuff, because this stuff is getting ready blow out like really. Yes. And in case y'all didn't know, within the last few weeks they done dropped about four different military planes and coppers. They just ain't telling them in public. So there's stuff going on in the background. You know, and it's getting ready to come out hot. The deal of it is, 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 is you all need to stop being asleep because in spite of the fact that our people keep thinking it has nothing to do with them, it has everything to do with you. Everything to do with you. I understand the abstract. Say my. I understand the abstract and pseudo aspect of it all, but as far as the fast food uh, move that you were dropping, um, what, just what put this way. Just write this down. Rabbi Finkelstein. <laughs> <laughs> they even, you know what they say? That these people, these people refer to certain people that don't read. So I won't say it. Are so hypocritical. 
so black hearted themselves. If you can tell them that you're feeding them their babies and they'll continue to do it, pretending that they don't know that that's really going on. Agreed. That's right. That's how the world looks at persons that call themselves Negro, black, and color. Agreed. Agreed. And they wonder why people come from around the world, don't trust them, don't like them, because any people that don't honor their mothers and fathers certainly can't be trusted. And we don't get it yet. And exploit them. We don't get it yet. Why Drawley came and said for you that we must remove these tags, these brands, these things that delude the slavery from the earth to avoid what? What, y'all? Earthquakes, storms, etc. You're tied to the earth. She's a living being. She's getting tired of your nigger stuff. Don't start thinking that you're so holy roly that you're not going to be getting rid of because this nigger problem is going to be solved this generation. One way or another, you're either going to honor your mothers and fathers, you ain't going to be here. And that's just simply it. However, we try to bring this information to you as humbly as we can, as reasonably as we can, and appeal to your reasoning to look at facts and understand that while these people are compromised and thinking they're they getting free sandwiches, they don't have an idea that they're getting ready to become the sandwich. Like some other people that became sandwiches during the Second World War was claiming to be somebody that they're not. Mm. And some of them is behind it. And so when you think that they don't know who you are, they absolutely do. I can't emphasize to you enough the timeline of our people either choosing not to be awake or if they're just that compromised and think that they're going to hide in the shadows or think that they're going to put their head in the sand and continue this Negro Act stuff. Well, from the divine order, from other dimensional energies, and from all politics on the earth planet of the Asiatic nations, you're going to help solve this nigga problem once for, for all. And if you insist on continuing to be the problem, there'll be no more mercy for you because you've been, you've been, how do you say, we've been given mercy for so many generations, including you're young. Tell me if you've never heard your great uncle or your grandpa talk about somebody that they know that went to the Second World War or the Vietnam War or the Panama or any of those secret wars and these Asiacs from around the world been said to these brothers, what are you doing here, brother? That's right. And a lot of them was breathing today only on that point because they really think that we just don't know. And so every time we out of a job two months we're going in the service for this Roman, going to and fro to earth devouring nations, so they've been kind of forgiving us. Well, this stuff is going on too long. They're getting tired of this nigger stuff, and these traitor nigger blacks who keep keeping this European in power and then marching all over the damn place, irritating the earth. Not only are they going to start getting rid of them, the earth is too. That's your answer on a lot of fronts. Bluntly, and I suggest, don't take my word for it, start observing things. Any more questions? I mean, you, you pretty much covered the basics of it all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I do have another one. I, I do. Like, yeah, give the mic. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. You can, all, you can hear me better now. Yeah. Got you. Now, I mean, obviously what you just stated is pretty much what we've read. Now, if you consider all the, the tactics that are being used, and primarily referring to the genocide and whatnot to not only eradicate us, but continue to keep us lull and, and, and dull in the mind and mentality yes. and whatnot. Where do you, what, what do you foresee to be the most important? This is what I'm saying to you, without cutting you short because of our time. What I'm appealing to you is that Rome, for the most part, has no power except what we keep giving them. Your real problem is people that look like you with turbans and fesses on that's trying to put you back into slavery and pretending they've been loving over draw in, who have done nothing to enforce that constitution and instead have been attacking anyone who has been producing literature or enforcing that constitution or taking his knowledge to the edges and the highways. That's right. I say to you, that's your problem. You move the tentacles of the octopus and you don't have to worry about the aquas no more. 
It's called caveat emptor. They probably gave you. That has not been enforced. But keep in mind, it's your birthright. It's your birthright. Never lie. That's it. It's not mine. It's not somebody else's and it doesn't belong to an organization or to a club. It is divine. It cannot be sold. It cannot be transferred to another. It can only be claimed. Are we clear? Clear. So you have to comprehend it and understand it in order to recognize your position with divine law in nature because she's the one that does not recognize personal station. Don't worry about what I think. Divine cosmic mother does not recognize personal station. All the club names that you keep making up for yourself is bulls shit. <laughs> Just makes us feel good for the time being like this. But really, I'm serious. We really need to fix this thing. And the conversation we had, you know, last week, even with a lot of people confused or misrepresenting what we present. This is why we put the proclamation papers and start giving it publicly to people, even though we know they wouldn't understand it all, because we need to move against Rome. Period. These right. people need to move and start making it clear in their plane that we do not consent. That's we right. do not stand as surety. Yes, we do not agree, and we're not Negro, Black, and color. In fact, and not waiting for some club member to try to control your nationality and birthright when this information was supposed to be taken on the hedges and the highways decades ago. Wow. And you see these people suffering and suffering and suffering and babies dying and families broke up and people sitting around talking about beliefs. Well, beliefs ain't going to fix a damn thing. Knowledge is. It's not. That's why you're here at the House of Reawakening Minds because it's a platform where knowledge is not restricted. <laughs> All right. That's right. Now, thank you for that, Dr. Nayo. <laughs> because it takes a brave person to stand for the truth. Guess why? Because it's not profitable. Right. It is not. <laughs> you know, just like, not this lesson, <laughs> like some of the. Like some of the um, lesson books, some of the first lesson books, some of y'all seen, some of you didn't see, didn't see. Like um, a couple of ones that you've seen pieces of but aren't officially published. They are, I had approached on W Street, a block from the house of my sister's house, 250,000 stipend. Go to, it was Upper Pennsylvania, up there near the Dutch, stuff like that. Um, I think it was one of the big hotels out there. Six months, modify some of the books, take the, the more out and put the black thing in. Uh, they, they gave me two, two fifty for starters. And then, of course, how it moved, how it moved, then they go from there. And then they was going to make deals on future writings or whatever I wrote. You know, I wouldn't be able to write anything unless they you know, I'd have to be under contract. So I don't have to do this. That's right. You know, I'm just not a sellout. That's it's right. Not. It's not. You know what I mean? I like my cheap sneaks. <laughs> really. You know, so I want you all to know that. And don't you think for one minute that these people don't know who you are, that these people don't want you to have a consciousness to be self-liberating, not tied to God liberating you, right. not somebody else liberating you, you liberating you. I only speak in such matters as that's what I desire to see, which is the only reason I'm here. The only reason I'm here. Are we clear? Clear. And I would like, I would desire honorably that when we ask you some questions, when we open up these glasses, that I see more hands. Because when I don't see hands, that tells me we're in trouble. I don't think you all know how devious these people are. I would hope that you wake up a little bit more before the blood gets deep. 
And I'm saying that honestly. All right. I'm saying it honestly. Because you're not the only factor that's turning this thing over. See, it ain't just us. This is what you need to understand. It's not just us. Our fall has caused the fall, caused the fall of many. many. And while we've been slow, the rest of the world is waking up and they're active. The problem that they have is that the firstborn, which is us, are the slowest damn ones. We're holding up every damn thing. And things are going to be moving ahead, and either you're going to be with it, the ascension, because if you're going to be descending in both elementary degrees and vibrations, right. as well as the politics that will come with it. It's not one dimensional. It's not three dimensional. You're already in the lower part of the four dimensional vibration, getting ready to go into the fifth. It's love. <clears throat> no, it's for real. And if you're not with it, you're not going to be able to deal with the mother. And that's, forget me. Earth is going to start kicking your asses in ways that you really do not understand. I'm serious. But I'm bringing it to your attention so that when you start feeling it and seeing certain things that you're, you're not going to say you weren't told and you're not going to say you weren't warned. How long have we been doing this, Doc? Here? Seven years. Wow. Something should be caught on. It's not. <laughs> But anyway, let, let me not rant because I'm thinking about some other stuff. I apologize. Red sheet. Red sheet. Hmm? Mikey? So, can, can I ask you a question? There's a question that keeps popping what? up the same question. <laughs> well, Tim wanted me to ask you if this pertains to Negroes that are in Masonic orders and Eastern Star. This is the reason why they're called clandestine. Let's cut this right real quick. Let, let, let's cut this stuff. Teach right there. Teach right there. Come on, teach right there. Straight with no chance. Come on. Fire up. Negroitis. We got to cure this Negroitis disease. Now, you all, Europeans and Asiatics, Europeans, and Asiatics. One of the first lessons they get in all Privy Council, Privy Council get used to this. <laughs> right? is given, whether it's given, whether it's given uh, Illuminati, Nice Temper, Nice Columbus, Masonry, uh, Mr. Prophets, Doors American Revolution, Knights Templars, Ku Klux Klan, Kyklos, Union Guard, White Communion, Thule Society, Ancient Egyptian Order of the Mystic Shrine, etc. One of the first lessons they get is of Who was Ruth the Moabites? Yeah, she was great grandma. What book is hers in the second kitchen in the Bible? 39. Circle, come 
Oh, wait. And the omega. First lesson they did was a group of Moabitis. Ruth the Moabitis is Yahshua's great great grandmother. The dark priesthood, after murdering him, swiped it. So they can mystify the world, renamed him at the Nicene Council of the priesthood of the Bishop of Rome, Jesus. So that one who has hair like lambs will skin like burnished brass, as if burned in the oven. Who was lynched by Rome, and they've been lynching y'all ever since. People of the same damn bloodline, you forgot who you are? How dare you go into them lodges, get this divine knowledge of the human family, and come out and still claim to be black? You're clandestine. It's not. That's why the European called black lodges clandestine. <laughs> They get this knowledge and they come out and claim you black when you know you Moabite. Short for Moabite, the Moroccan, or more. That's why they consider so called black masons and eastern stars clandestine. Translation, they're a fraud. That's the first lesson they get. Get that knowledge and still claim to be Negro, black, and colored, which they know is a brand system set up by the German Dutch masters from the East Dutch Company when they came into Manhattan, New York, and a few of these niggers sold out for a string of beads. Rosary beads. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Following after the Rome. The Romans running, doing business in Romans' names. Claim to be Roman Christians and wonder why they ain't got shit. <laughs> and I ain't excusing my language, they're tired as niggas saw. Our babies dying and families falling apart, we always marching and praying all over the place, wasting the world's time. Mm -hmm. Pretending to be spiritual, always begging though. We got it, baby. You know, we ain't nothing else to Jesus listen. I love you, well, the world said y'all got all these sandwiches. Why y'all always in line? You know, give somebody else a space. How about that? You got NAACP pee on me. You should be. We're full. Hey, we're full of doo doo. And we need to start admitting it and stop putting this crap on our youngs and then look at them suffer and then saying that the devil did it. Devil ain't did crap. We keep doing it, following after Rome. That's what's wrong with us. We need to render under Caesar what is Caesar's. Then, then Yahshua said, I come amongst my own, he received, they receive me not. They want to be black, huh? Well, they ain't getting the best treatment, are they? Nope. They want to be monkeys called Negroes. That's what Negro means, means monkey. And when y'all talk about Naga, the priesthood, our people are phony. You know, it's like we need to stop playing with these people and telling them what they want to hear. And if they don't want it, fine. Let's save the next generation. Give them a chance. Yes. The hell with these sellouts. Yes. That's my answer to that. <laughs> All right, hold on. Come on. Excuse me. Go ahead, go ahead. Microphone, microphone. He's got the mic. Yeah, so I just wanted to ask, um, where can I read up on, um, I mean, I know it's common kind of history, but just where they sold Manhattan for beads. Say it again, real quick. Where they, where they sold Manhattan for beads at, I just want to read up on that. Because I, me and my friend, this is where, about that. this is where, this is what happened. The Europeans claim, claim the land of Nod, which you call New York. Yes, land of Nod. For a string of bees with a couple of shakuns, mm. drunkards, coming through who sold it to Europeans. And they say, the Indians, we ain't damn Indians, and in North America they ain't India, sold Manhattan for a string of bees. You can't sell the land. 
Oh, it's against right. the culture. There's nothing that we do or that we have ever done without considering seven generations down in council with the circle of mothers before anything is executed and you dag on shore and sell on the land. So any claims that the Europeans have that we sold them any land at the North Gate, at Turtle Island, is a lie. And anyone who supports it, called black nigger leaders, they're liars too, and engines too. And there ain't no damn engines here. And we ain't engines. You get that one clear too. Because that's going to get taken care of too. We want all this nigger stuff is going to be solved this generation. We try to plan with them. We're not going to keep seeing these babies grow up in this nigger stuff, you know, watching them shoot them on the street and steal their organs. And a whole bunch of other stuff while everybody sit around talking about let us pray. Any other questions? <laughs> let us continue. All right. <clears throat> I just want to make y'all very clear. <clears throat> you know, like. When sometimes the ball in your face gets a little unraveled. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. 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 Right, for real. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One of the things that that, that um that used to always happen to me, you know, because they, they the dye that they bring from uh, um from Morocco, the that Anthony dye that they use. For some reason, my tassels would always turn red. And within a year, I'm highly electrical, very highly electrical. And for some reason, they interact and they always turn red. And I would go to get um, new, another tassel. I went on, I, who's familiar with Philadelphia? A Street. A street. Where you, yeah, well, I go, I go down there and they move one of them assignment places down there. And I would, um, I said, I, well, I want a 360 degree tassel. Because you know the ones they sell standard, they don't give you 360 degree tassels. Because of cost, manufacturing, whatever. So I want a 360 degree tassel. You know where I went? To the synagogue. Hmm? To the synagogue. I went down there to Jules Row to see one of those Yeshivics. And I went in there and I said, I want a 360 degree tassel, nine inch, right? And he looked at me for me and he said, 360 degree tassel, huh? Yeah, 360 degree tassel. Just wait for a minute. And when somebody else was in the store getting stuff, and he waited until they went, and he said, uh, Hey man, let me see what I got in the back. So he went in the back, came out with a blue, big blue sapphire ring. Gold ring with blue sapphire. Beautiful, big stone with Allah in gold on the stone. And he says, what do you want? Do you want the burgundy one? You, I know you want the red one, don't you? I said, yeah, give me a red fez. I want the daddy. <laughs> Right? So I had to order it. He says, you come see me in a few days, huh? Yeah, come see me in a few days. <laughs> you think I'll go get that tassel at a mosque? Or a synagogue? Or a temple? No, because no, Jalil ain't going to sing, so it's not available in the temple. No. Like they used to be. Because he has one too. Do you understand? Everybody got one but the ones who's supposed to have it, which are the heirs to the estate. That's what pisses me off. And if we keep on acting like we gotta convince them that we somebody, they already know who you are. It's your nigger leaders that's clearly the problem. Like Drawley said, be careful, Morris. 
Some of your own brothers and sisters wearing turbans and dresses will be trying to put you back into slavery. So I went to a Yeshitic, because I already know they got it. Why? Because they're running this thing for Rome. They ain't separate. Anybody got degrees know that they ain't separate. The only ones who think this stuff is separate is believers who keep getting raped. Well, you come to the house of reawakening minds because this ain't the house for believers. This is the house for those who seek knowledge, for those who seek truth, that those who want liberation for humanity, that those who love the children for real, not for fake. And I hope that whatever we do, it does some good that when you leave here, that you go with something more than what you came in with. That's right. That's right. Honestly. I don't think I don't Mike. Say Mike. Yeah. Mm. I think the mic's up there. Right in front of you. Yeah. Um, I, um, Akeem, um, Bay, um, Domicile, Orlando, Florida. Um, I just uh, I tune in to Taj Tarate and uh, mostly on the YouTube um, since uh, probably here now. Um, my natural birth place, Jamaica, domicile. I uh, grew up in the same hometown, Marcus Garvey, Bob Marley. Um, I'm on the quest for knowledge. I'm on the quest for knowledge. That's so my, uh, my girlfriend, she, she here, she support me. Um, I've been to many temples, but it's um, most of the time that um, like I've been to the temple, um, if I, I would say because I've been there, I have the experience. Mm -hmm. Now, what um, connect me to really the Moorish Science Temple or the in a Morris directory, which I follow also. Um, <clears throat> I'm looking, seeking for knowledge, and I've been into <coughs> many trouble, many, many problems, many trouble, many, and been to court, been to many, many, many courts. This gentleman right here, um, RB Bay Publication, is the one that really um, liberate, liberate me as a person. Also, um, mm -hmm. I had filled out my um, application, <coughs> my um, for my kids, my uh, my family. Therefore, because I feel that is the, I know. <laughs> Not feel, I know. Um, I never voted. I never been involved in politics. I never been involved in any form of private organization. I believe that I'm a natural person. I never consider myself black or whatever it is. I was born and raised in Jamaica as an English term. We never consider ourselves as black people. So right. Never. I came here on looking for job, looking for work, looking for, even now as we speak, we're homeless. Mm -hmm. Right? But I know that I'm on the path of something good because I can be able to do my paperwork, sit down, and because of RB Day publication and this person that I follow. I first um, saw one of his clips and um, uh, brother Umar, Dr. Umar Johnson. I followed Dr. Umar Johnson and um, Hidden Colors, Dr. Phil Valentine, and I. Dr. Umar Johnson was speaking, then Brother Taj started speaking, and then I got connected. I travel, I've been in uh, Baltimore, mm. waited for a week mm. to come here. Right on. Remember, and remember this always, you walk from one part of your house to another part of your house. Don't ever let anyone treat you like you're not home. It's That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. All right. So, um, I got a question too. Go ahead. Right? Because um, um, I wear my fest awesome. Not because I'm a Moorish Science Temple registered more or Moorish Science Temple, but out of the respect for the Moorish Science Temple. Upon wearing my fez, I've met a lot. i met a lot of brothers along the way who want to learn, want to come, want to. But we can't find anywhere where we can go. As I said, I drive like for twelve hours from Orlando to get here, waiting for a week to see 
just running blood. A lot of us who are fortunate, but we would love, you know, to have something here where we can assemble. Well, trust that you're in the right place. Because one thing that, um, that uh, we're also doing here, we're trying to expand with others. Even my son is coming out. And my son, you know, got so burned, he didn't want to deal with people. I talked to him for a while and he started coming out. You know, he's a high priest. He's very learned too. He's here the tomorrow. ancient knowledge. He's here Animal. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, and and um, the deal of it is, what I seek and what I look for is that any one of you at any time can get up there and intelligently and with skill, in fact, just be yourself and deal with anybody anywhere from the president down to a janitor with confidence. Meaning if I gotta go to the bedroom and don't come back out, any one of you can go up there and finish this class. That's, That's what I want to see. That's what I want to see. Because when you see that move in that direction, I know that liberation is on its way. It's, on its way it's just like um, the prophet says, like, I mean, a lot of us, the temple is going to be full, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's like, I mean, we're trying to get to the temples. Many temples have turned us like um, the temple in Baltimore, right? Mm -hmm. The temple in Baltimore, mm -hmm. not Baltimore. We got about the four Georgia, of them. The one in Georgia yeah. and then the one in um, Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. It's like we go and I said, um, Taj, um, Brother Taj, he was the one that really tell us uh -oh. that we can go to this. <laughs> like, no, mm -hmm. no, when they start talking stuff and like, you know, mm -hmm. it's like, how can we, what can we do as a people? Because Marcus Garvey says we have to organize us. Educate, yes. educate. When, 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 they, when they locked Marcus Garvey up in Atlanta, the prophet went down there. I'll, I'll bring a letter to show you the letter. I'll show you the letter. Because people try to act like they didn't work together too. You know, they're always trying to. Yeah, it's when I get to the temple, I saw that they actually work together. Yeah, of course they do. I saw pictures, yeah. and then I start, you know, yeah. doing it. Now, what the problem we have with, the, with what is called the sellout is that they start making the UNIA and and the temples um, into a church. That's right. You know, uh, and did everything to suppress the national side of the more divine <coughs> national movement of the world. And definitely do not talk Constitution stuff or history. And in violation of their charters, negate any platform for school, no which sense. they're required to have. Mm -hmm. No sense. The other deal, to make sure that they collect finances for buses that will never appear, and haven't appeared yet, but they keep taking transportation funds. Mm -hmm. And to make sure the prophet's paper is not restored. Prophet Nobdrali said, our press is the most powerful weapon in the hand of our group today. Yes. He said, we'll never be able to shove ourselves out from the lies that are heaped on us by the day without our press of our own. When they did some Drali, got rid of Drali, they broke it down and jumped it. How come they don't tell you about that in the temples? How come they don't tell you why they don't have a newspaper? But they got time to attack top talk to God, don't they? Yes. Yeah, because I produce literature. It's not. It's not. It's and I give information that liberates people. I ain't making you no follower. See, this is the deal. Once you once you understand certain fundamental truths, you know, you can take the training wheels off. Why am I upset because y'all taking training wheels off? Everybody one day once you come riding up to them temples and mosques and stuff with training wheels, little tricycles and stuff, all these grown people. We're believers, hallelujah to you. Well, this is not the place for that. Right. Islam. We tell you bring pens and papers because we mean it. Islam. Because we want you to challenge what we present to you. That's we right. want you to do research because it will strengthen it. Prove us wrong and learn what is right. Islam. You know they never say we're lying? Hey, Mama didn't say that. Hey, so we talk about this stuff. Who gave him more authority to teach the truth? <laughs> That's the question. He ain't with us. You damn right I ain't with them. 
Yeah, a lot of yeah, a lot of them. And they keep on saying You know the criticism make me know I'm doing something right. Islam. That's right. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. buy me and I don't need no damn titles. <laughs> so suck. So. <laughs> <laughs> you have to speak truth, brother, and that's why I'm here. You know that's why I'm here. Because many people try to give us back each other, sell us stuff and sell us right. stuff and it know, can't be bought. It can't be bought. Birthright. No, it can't be bought. It yeah. can't be bought. And you know, so that's why I'm here. You all told us in the divine morning, they're helping this great missionary work. Let me tell you what this missionary work is. To bring my people back into the constitutional fold of government. If that's not a directive, nothing is. And if anybody claims to be a sheep or a grand sheep of the Morris Science Temple of America, Morris Temple of Science, Morris Holy Temple of Science, Old Canine Temple, Morris Divine National Movement, and don't seek to enforce that constitution, they're telling you that they're COVID-tell pro. They're telling you by their actions. That's right. That's right. Because that's the heart of the Moorish movement. Mm. Period. Mm. This is why, again, you know, we uh, when we did the Al Moroccan Star newspaper, one of the first things we did was publish that letter that I got from Grand Sheikh Hamad Eon in North New Jersey from the Moorish Holy Temple of Science. He was the last prophet that walked on the last um, he was the last uh, Grand Sheikh that walked with the prophet. And I went there one time, he gave me constitution, divine constitution, in the frame, off the wall. He gave me his Quran. I was best he called me in the back. We was going, we went to a ball up here, we was going in. And um, first time I met him, last time I met him. And he gave me papers with the Morris Divine National Movement, Morris Holy Temple of Science, and the Morris Science Temple of America bylaws together. I have not seen them since, except what Grand Chief Hamadi will give me. And what I've seen and seen since in traveling, these people that I expected to be happy, you know, they don't like people that have knowledge. This is what I'm learning. They want dummies. Yes. That, oh, please tell me about the Lord. <laughs> How many times you told me that he loves me? Jesus loves you. Damn, say that again. I'll be back tomorrow here again. I'm not convinced. You know, we're full of it. I'm not having it, and I'm not going to have them putting it on these babies. I don't care whether they got a garb on, feathers on, robe. All of them can go in the fire together, as far as I'm concerned, because they're all partners. And I'm going to do everything that I can to liberate anybody that I walk into. And I'll spend my last breath digging and digging and digging, and i got a couple more shovels, and I'm going to dig some more. And they can throw the dirt back, and I'm going to dig some more. But you ain't coming here without leaving with a liberated mind. All right. Let's continue. <laughs> anyway, Horace Green wisely and with cunning used the opportunities afforded him by the political jurisdiction style as the United States of America. And by his powerfully influential newspaper franchise, he made, formed, and invoked his legacy and impacting social mark as noted by most erudite scholars of note who became the mitigators of North American history. Whether or not Greeley foresaw the impacting outcomes of his social contributions among the Whigs, or whether he consciously planned them that way, may be contemplated, analyzed, or discussed by historians. But may also be left to innuendo and conjecture. Nonetheless, Horace Greeley, the man, the intellectual, the philosopher, the political activist, the mover, and the shaker, the Whig worked his way to the forefront of the Whig's party. He has definitely left his mark in and upon America, American al Moroccan history. Greeley is not and should not be viewed as merely the not so obscure and yet powerful newspaper tycoon. It must be substantially noted that Horace Greeley true. has truly and actually had more long, it should be long lasting. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
more long-lasting and influential impact on the contemporary policies established for operative politics upon America, the land, than many would ever casually attribute to him. Keep that in mind. So when I ask you all, are you familiar with Horace Greeley? Understand that much of his work has much to do with the politics that you suffer today, including the control of the mainstream media, the enforcement of the Negro, Black, and Colored Code systems that you suffer from, the establishment of Europeans starting to call themselves white people and calling you black, and you starting to believe it, which gives up your birthright. Are we clear? We're clear. Including the operations that you see today under the CIA, which is really a branch of the Vatican. And having you think that it's a branch of the United States government, it's a branch of the Vatican. And the Vatican owns the United States Service Corporation. That's right. That's been faked as the country. So a lot of your misconceptions and a lot of your economic political <coughs> abuses. There you go. And then you all don't know Horace Greeley. <coughs> Guess what? Every European does. <laughs> so when they look at you like you're out with dad going lunch with disrespect, it's because they know more about your history than you know. When we always sit around talking about Jesus and God and Lala, I don't even know our own bloodline. Meanwhile, we've got 59 organizations marching and praying all the damn time for freedom and liberation. Don't even know what the words mean. We're full of it. And we do everything but address the actual issues. Trying to feel good. We call it spirituality because we jumped up two times and our hearts start beating. We call it. Anyway, I want to get past this. I'm going to get to some other points on this because I want you to understand some things. Now, on the fourth day of December of 1839, the Whigs, that's the Whigs Party, held their national convention for selecting their candidate for president. That convention was held at Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. It was about a year before the general election. The leading candidates were William Henry Harrison, who was a war hero and also the most powerful, and probably most successful, of the opponents of Van Buren in the election of 1836. He had been campaigning for the Whig nomination since that time. Another candidate was General Winfield Scott, who was a war hero at the War of 1812. You need to know about that War of 1812, the last of the Moorish ships on the Great Lakes. That was your ships. War of 1812 was against you. That was your last ship. And they wasn't bringing sardine people here. There's the Moorish Navy. Marines. That's where you get Marines from. If I'm not mistaken, that war was actually placed upon the uh, Maryland license plate as well. War of 1812. Of course. Why do you think? Why do you think? Because marriage land and the land of virgins, they take a little piece of it and call it Alexandria. That's right. For Alexander the Great. Conquering the Moors. Y'all ain't caught on yet. They even tell you in the architecture, they tell you in the history, they tell you in the streets. And our people up in all the mystery land. One of these days I'll see Jesus and I'm going to call him on his iPhone 10. Last time it was the iPhone 9, but see, I spiritually ascended. <laughs> we are full of it. And we need to stop our bullshit. Not excuse me. <laughs> okay, I'm with that. <laughs> anyway. We're just going to go through some points of facts. Horace really was the founder of the Republican Party. Yes, sir. So, people, our people have been voting and not voting and everything else, right? And they don't even don't know about these parties they've been voting not for or for. Right. You know how many people around the world come from other countries laughing at these people and 
from a, we're people of color. See, what we do, we saw two pyramids and said, and see, so, so the great God of the ancient connections and stuff, they don't even know basic politics today. Do you understand what I'm saying? You want to talk about the kings and queens of Egypt from which this government is a descendant. And you know these people that are movers and shakers that screw in your families today. We we'll talk about see King Tut. See, it was really gold. It was about eighteen gauge gold upon his casket and shit. I'm getting sick of this nigger stuff. We're gonna call down. They gonna call the elders. They don't know who the elders are. And I suggest they need to stop calling because they don't want to see him. You know how they say, I'm going to see Jesus and I say, No, they don't. We're going to call on deep. I suggest you don't do that. Because he's going to just come and bless us and shit. No, he's not. They think I'm talking shit. <laughs> You wait till they see that sword that's got two edges that's going to start moving nigger heads. They want to see Jesus. They're getting ready to meet justice. It's not. And we're warning them. We've been warning them for quite a while. They want to be black. They got much more time to all their wishes and dreams will be met honorably and the earth will start to be cleansed of those who are defiling it. I guarantee you that. And you ain't going to wait till no next generation to figure out what Todd you guys just said, because they're getting ready to see the stuff in the next two months. Can guarantee let's, you that. They had, um, oh, you go there you go, brother. Yes, yeah, son. There's a book called um, Blue Blood, True Blood, where they tell you about all um, Everything that it says, mm -hmm. you know, this is what everything that is planned, and they speak about it in um, in um, that book, Blue Blood, which um, the global, uh, uh, global, some, uh, um, no, um, some, the global, uh, yeah, they speak about the agenda, the global agenda, also. Okay, yeah. okay. King Alfred Bryant? Yeah, which is the, um, well, the, well, that, the, the plan is, the plan is in effect, but that's Unum Sanctum. So no matter what the name is, yeah. it's Unum Sanctum. You know, it's like the Homeland Security, Unum Sanctum. IRS, Unum Sanctum. Negro Act, Unum Sanctum. Uh, that's why they're trying to get, you know why they're really working hard to get the guns from these people? The you know why they shoot up in these schools and stuff like that? They want to get the guns? So they'll have no resistance because they're going to come in here with trash trucks and they're going to move these people out of these corners, literally, throw them in trash trucks. And all of these new trash burning place, places, facilities, they have high technology, they burn bone. So they don't have to worry about vaporization. That's what they're serious. Tell me what's going to be happening. It's just that these people right now, see right now they're sticking in plastic cards and they're still working. You, you, they're distracted. You know, they're putting in the ATM stuff. Pretty soon the machine will go. The cards ain't coming out. And when it really hits the fan, as soon as these people start doing their Negro marches on the street, I guarantee you, there will be no more watts like they did in California and stuff. The They're going to use energy weapons on them. Yes, they are. They're going to use microwave on them. And those who walk away will just get cancer later. But they're not, the nigger shit ain't happening no more. You're going to work to fix this stuff honorably and honestly, or they're not going to be here. Meanwhile, we got to deal with Rome too. So we're going to have some ancient Chinese is going to have to start dealing with them. But this problem is going to be solved once and for all because the earth is tireless. 
You understand? What they're trying to do is let a few others in here who've been competing for the planet, which is also being blocked. You need to understand stuff is bigger than you think it is. So those who want to be here better be worthy of standing on this planet. Because if we don't, if we can't solve it, they got a cure for it, and it, the cure is is disappear. Go ahead, my brother. Uh, go back to the license plate. Just kind of just a quick thought. Uh, is that why DC, the DC license plates have those three on them? Just to the three stars. That's wrong. Yeah. That's wrong. That's, that's wrong. Like Washington. And, and remember, we got Maryland in, and, and um, Virginia, and then with their district, that's why they call it district, that's for the Roman goddess Columbia. Roman goddess. Westminster, all right? Now you understand why they murdered Truslan? When he was setting up the Republic on the islands? Mm -hmm. Yes, you got that right. Well, it's about that. The deal of this, the people today don't know that they're there, that this is part of the empire. They, were, they think they're different people. Our concepts about ourselves are, are, are totally incorrect. No different than when we leave here and go to Philadelphia. It's no different than when we leave here and go to Ameca, Boricán, Dominica, Brazil. Those the United States of America. That's a political metaphor, not a country. Estados Unidos, do Mexico. That's the United States of America. What point y'all don't get this? The problem is, is that you're at the core of it. You're the core. <coughs> and the least knowledgeable. That's the danger for you. If it wasn't for the fact that you were the firstborn, you would have been eliminated. And that's the truth. If it were not for the fact that you are the descendants of the firstborn, you would have been eliminated. Because you're just that problematic. Do you understand? <laughs> However, it's true. Yeah. I'm being honest. That's right. It's true. Problem is, how many of you ever been to that Masonic Lodge in North Broad Street? I ain't seen many hands again. And you see, 
You see George Washington closed the lodge like this. Whoa. You know why he closed the lodge like that? They thought Hiram was dead. And they buried him. Shallow grave. It was a shallow grave. Point is, cut through the chase. The reason why they kill you off is because they discovered they had substitute passwords and they didn't have all the keys. But they can't take it from you because it's in your DNA. And if it wasn't for that, they'd have iced you. That's why you're breathing right now. We're going to pull that DNA out, though. <laughs> That's the truth. Harris really initiated an investigation of the United States Congress, of which he was a participant. He was an active member of the House of Representatives for three months. However, his unrelenting candor, uncompromised outspokenness, and generally principled character made him less than popular with many of his colleagues. Three, Horace Greeley gave strong and affirmative support to Abraham Lincoln's candidacy for the President of the United States. <coughs> Four, Horace Greeley urged President Abraham Lincoln to end slavery. That passionately suggested pressure came from Greeley even before Lincoln himself demonstrated evident in showing a willingness to act upon that institutionalized and banal form of human trafficking, peonage, and social corruption. Yeah, that's great. Horace Greeley was one of the most prominent active political figures among the European sons at North America. Excuse me. He strongly promoted the adopted practice among the sons and daughters of European descent to take for themselves the social status title of white, white people. Thus, Greeley was a key propagator of prompting the practice of Europeans arbitrarily taking on and trading the free white person's social status with the politically and economically weakened the noble Moors. They trade places. That's us. That's us. Everybody know about us. So when your so-called black and Negro leaders of color keep talking about we are people of color and stuff. And people of darkness of the blackness of the universe of the Kabbalisticness of the carbon. And then Europeans, and then you, and the next day you marching and praying, talk about those of you who treat this right and stuff. That's why he be saying, Why don't y'all leave us the hell alone? Go back to your nigger leaders that keep selling you back into slavery. That's what he's talking about. Because everybody know that they ain't white people, that you was the white people, it's a legal status, and you turn around and call yourself black people because of your nigger leaders agreeing to the black codes, then when they enforce it, you want to cry the blues. When you agree to it. It's called a contract. You don't make a pact with the devil and he don't come for a piece of meat, because he do. Tough cookies. Your nigger leaders is your problem. Islam. Islam, I was um, looking at an interview of uh, some brothers from, uh, from the continent of Africa, and they were asked um, about the slave experience and slavery and people being kidnapped from um, Africa and brought to America. When, when did they know, did they learn about, did they know about that? They said that they had never, that was never talked about in, in their culture. And Cause, cause they, it's a lie. Yeah, they heard. They heard it when they got here. Yeah. That's when they found out that. It's that, a lie. I know, but it was interesting to have that. That that's not that what they're. Concerned. Yeah, that's not the history that they even think about in terms it's called of the period of reconstruction. They reconstructed history. You know, you deal with any anthropologists around the world, from Russia to China to South America, and they will tell you that the people of Asiatic African descent that are called Negro, Blacks, and Colors, and Latinos, etc., were here 98%. If, there's one, if there is 0.99% of 1% that came from someplace else on slave ships, it's a probably an overstatement. 
These people are Aboriginal and bound to this land by inheritance and by birthright. And all this other crap is BS. This is why they don't need... Go anywhere. Look, let's, let's look at the problems that we have right now. With the problems we have in these communities, wouldn't these people be deported with all this bull that they exactly. bring? Exactly. Mm -hmm. huh? How come they're not deported? Microphone. Yeah. Because they're home, Dorothy. <laughs> bumped our head. You just got bumped. You bumped your head. Tosh. Good. Um, I just wanted to point out something I know commonly read. This is uh, not the favorite dictionary, but 1828 Noah Webster when he talks about America. And we talk about America and the noun and Native of America originally applied to the aboriginals or the copper colored races found here by the Europeans. But it continues to say, but now yeah. apply to the descendants of Europeans born in America. So the what traded places mm -hmm. and the definition of am arrogant. Come, 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 come over here just a minute. Come over here just a minute. I just, I want you to come on. Come, please. Come on. Do your moonwalk. Oh, come on. Oh, can you can, can, say that again? Noah, <laughs> Noah Webster. Noah Webster, 1828, Noah Webster, a, a dictionary that's 200 years old. So part of speech first, American. American is a noun. A native of America originally applied to the aboriginals or the copper colored races found here by the Europeans. But it continues. It then says, but now, but now applied to the descendants of your born in America. All right, now, and this give me this mic for a minute. Hold this for a minute. Give me a hand, right there. See this copper coin? Come on with it. This is how you tell who the Americans are. Very simple. That would be me. You gotta, you gotta focus on it, don't you? I gotta, I gotta get it up there. Yeah. Uh, there, there, oh, there you go. There you go. There's your Americans. And the rest that they told you is bullshit reconstruction. <laughs> That's right. That's what you call reconstruction. But now means, it's called connotative. That's, a, that's construction. Is New York, is North America, they go. You ever seen a map, Mom? You ever seen a map in school? Yeah, give it a minute. All right. Is York America? Is York America? No. All right, we're going to make sure that's fixed, right? That's right. Mm -hmm. Now, all right. This chair here, this chair is sitting here, right? And this chair is sitting here. And if I was sitting in this chair, am I sitting in that chair? No. So I'm sitting in this chair, right? So Europe is, like Dr. Lee said, Europe is over 3,000 miles away. Europe being going to take over a lot of water. <laughs> That's right. They ain't American. They're not American. No Stop way. calling them that. It's the same problem we had, which is why we're giving you a lesson on the hearts, really. You're the American. You're the American. American. And you must be yourself. That's right. He's claiming his power because we keep giving it to him. Every word that proceeds out your mouth is a spell cast for prayer. It can be P R A Y or P R E Y based on whether you're negative or positive. So when you open your mouth, you better know what you're talking about. That's right. Because nature doesn't recognize personal station. You keep casting these nigger black spells and you keep getting the results of them. So don't get mad. European's a vulture. He's an opportunist. You know, you lay down in the desert because you want a suntan even you know you didn't need one. And that while the vultures start flying around trying to see. Because you look like, you know, bologna sandwich or something. <laughs> And that while they're going to come down and test you. That's right. You know, we talk about leave me alone. Because a lot of them come, you ain't getting up. Same thing with Europeans. Y'all want to be black? Y'all want to follow after Rome? Guess what? Rome said, I'm making the rules. You want to buy and sell the mark and the number of his name? He said, you ain't buying nothing in his name that he don't own. So the state, state owns everything that so-called black people have. They're called wards of the state. Even your children in the womb, but you went to him to get a marriage certificate. Yeah. So you want to buy and sell something that's divine? Guess
guess what? All the eggs belong to the Pope. So they kick doors in, how to, what they call DHS and, and all this stuff, stuff, homeland, whatever. Well, guess what? The marriage certificates are bank bombs. Ain't got a daggone thing to do. Jesus, God, Allah, Moses, Muhammad, the grand ancient mothers and fathers is BS. They're bank bombs. Birth certificates, they're bank bonds. So your driver's license, bank bond <laughs> against your estate. So you better grow up, stop wasting your time with belief systems, and start dealing with knowledge, and start countering Rome, and start rejecting Rome. Reject Rome. Well, he got your gun. Reject him. Wow. Who's going to get your job? Reject him. He owed me $2.50 this time. Reject him. Bunkers in the house, y'all. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> he makes so sure, he hooks us up, boy, I'm telling you. Thank you. Stand up for a second. Give her a hand, y'all. Now, understand this, that everybody, and one, the other reason I wanted to go into this, now the, um, the core of the lesson, even though it's available to anyone for, that has a serious library and do some deep research, uh, a short synopsis is given on Horace Greeley, you know, through the Order of the Great Seal. And of those of you who are made members of the Great Seal who's written for the certificates in Washington, D.C., um, for the most part, they try to keep this information from people. You know, and those of you who've been around Roundtable, and you know, because basically, they, their position is, is that if you don't have the certificates, you're not supposed to have this information. You know, my position is being a mayor of the Order of the Great Seal, and I've watched and I've traveled this country, and I've talked to people all south of this country, and I see the constant problems that we have, and my issue is, Whatever I have to do to try to get this information to the people, I'm not letting nothing block it. Because if they give it to me, I'm taking the trigger at the door off. So don't tell me nothing. I mean, I'm not talking about the personal stuff. I'm talking about, you know, as far as how things really work. Right. I'm taking the doors off, you know. I ain't going to talk about um, one of these days. Mm -hmm. Now, so hopefully, this is what I comprehend and I understand. There is, in reality, None of this that you don't know. The deal of it is, is that you've been, you buried yourself with belief systems. You buried yourself. And so you're responsible to this. So don't think, or don't think that I take the position that because we share and some of you don't raise your hand, that it's my stuff or somebody like me and it ain't yours. This is your yes. stuff. All right. Yes. Yes. This is your stuff. Every man, every woman, baby, and every child That's must right. confess their own. That's right. Yes. Keep that in mind, mama. That's right. Because this is what it means. When these people start making excuses, I suggest, because they've been calling, because this is really what's happening. They've been calling on Jesus for some time. It was just a password. Right. There's nothing wrong with it. Password. However, they've invoked the enemies. Yeah. And he, quote, they are coming. However, it's not what these people expect. They are cleansers. Jesus is a cleanser. Jesus means justice. And the defiling of the planet is on its way to another vibratory state where all the priesthood of the Piscean Age have no shadow to hide. Mm -hmm. That's why I wanted to read the Book of the East. I'm going to print some out, and next time y'all come, I'm going to give you a coffee ticket home. And read it every other day. Purge yourselves. Mm. You need it. It's live. You need it. You need it. Don't take my word for it, just do it. Because this is what you have to do. It, it will not be done for you. You must do it. 
The trinity of demons that have been operating on Gaia for these last few hundred years take their tradition from an ancient operation platform, this old operation platform. However, the earth must be purged. This is the purging. And this is, as you see in your Circle 7 Quran, this is the uniting of Asia. Go ahead. All right. Um, All right. Don't rap now. Just I won't. Listen. I won't. No Sally Goldman's like this. Like mm -hmm. no, no, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> go ahead. Okay. Um, so, and I shared this with Mother Delilah as it is as well. Um, go ahead. The speaker was born near um, the Massachusetts Republic, Brother Yusa. Yeah. Um, sorry, yo. And the word unity came up. Yeah. All righty. And he, he says, hey, more. You ever looked up Unity in Black's Law Dictionary 4th edition? And I said, yeah, let me go double check it. And the first four, five words after it mm -hmm. let me immediately know that Negro, Black, colored people can't talk Unity. No, never can. Because never it says in the law of the states, before it even gives you the definition for Unity. Yeah. In the law of the, of the states. states. So if you're a Negro, Black, colored, it's, it's just a really cool Queen Latifah record. Mm -hmm. No, what it but is, is, is no. Okay. Let's, let's, so it's fine. no confusion. It's fine. Stateless persons. So stateless persons can't be state persons. It's not. Therefore, they can't talk unity. It's not. Unity is not acknowledged amongst them. In law, they're expendable. It's not. Which is what we're trying to stop. We're trying to save them. They're clawing to stay in the mud. It's like throwing somebody a life raft that can't swim. And you throw them a life raft, you know, you going down the street and everything, you see somebody choking with backstroking, the river was a little wider than they thought it was. So you feel sorry for them, you throw a life raft down, you know, those rope and stuff like that. Damn, grab it. Oh, thank you, Jesus, my son. <laughs> and then. <laughs> Then they stop. I know you didn't give me no plaid life rat. <laughs> and that's pretty much what our people are to truth. They always ask to be saved. They always ask them, how come somebody don't tell us the truth? How come everybody else doing good? Because as soon as they tell them the truth, they run. They will start debating about what their beliefs are that never worked. And they attack the truth tell. Which is why they're catching hell. But they won't render on the Caesar or the Caesar. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's it's sickening. But the deal of it is give the children a chance. Give the babies a chance. Now the anti-slavery Whigs, the split or schism that developed within the Whigs party became so strong as to cause them to become almost separate. These factions became known as the conscience Whigs on the one side and the cotton wigs on the other. The conscience wigs were known to be those European sons, daughters, and associate supporters among the wigs who were in staunch opposition to slavery, imposed peonage, and human trafficking. Other sympathizers supporting liberty use should also be taken in consideration. The conscience wigs were also generally active in organizations formed against the inherent as cheatage, vassalage, and the peonage characteristics attributed to such human trafficking activities. The cotton wigs, pro-slavery wigs, the more inhumane side of the Whigs Party was known as the cotton wigs, and consisted of those members of the Whigs Party who were supportive of and politically promoting slavery, human trafficking, and peonage. Therefore, in your continued erudition on expanded studies about the Whigmore Party, the Whigs, and the related and associated subjects take some time to review these issues and to note the contradictions as evidence within the party. Nevertheless, all neophyte scholars and adepts must cognate that whenever one is reflecting upon the social and political motives of the European sons and daughters doing business at or administrating government at the North Gate and across the planet, one must also strongly consider and be cognizant of King Hanarapia Bay's code of law. Why? Because all Europeans know that they are hybrids 
and are also cognate of the codes. These are facts, even if they do not speak of them openly. These ancient codes, quote unquote, are a primal point of social and political reference and are known and studied by those who study jurisprudence and by those who, by operative government, legislate the rules of law on the planet Earth, even in these days. While not often spoken about publicly or openly, Hammurabi's codes about, uh, pardon me, above all, were and are of absolute influence. This immovable fact is mentally, politically, and analytically placed and fixed into the time, period, social context. One must observe the subtle pressures of the codes, quote unquote, in the thought processes of the Whigs, and use one's knowledge about the codes as a social political backdrop. One is deemed, though with her, uh, hesitance, to relate to the not so subtle yet established residual effects of the harsh parts of the codes as related to the declaration of the children of Israel, Israel to slavery under the Moorish nation. And with reason and with discipline, view these histories with objective analysis, knowing of the suppressed nature of, of surrounding the same. Also note that many of the southern members of the Wigamore Party had sided with the Unionists in the conflict and in matters involving succession of the southern states from the Union. Other related activities and issues also, issues also broaden the breaches manifesting within the party during 1850. The controversial, foul, and corrupt conditions and pressing questions caused by and involved with slavery and with its social, economic, and political effects caused and exacerbated a split within the Whigs party. Most influential in that split or schism which marked the party was the heated arguments, hostilities, and destructive activities which took place in multiple places, other territories at North America. Uh, um, now, pay attention to this because we do some research too on this, you all. The Kansas-Nebraska Act. One is uh, reminded to expand one's studies on the nature of the controversy surrounding that subject and of the associated affairs conjoined to them. Therefore, research what is called the Kansas-Nebraska Act. Out from that heated and terse philosophical and political split came the creation of not only the noted schism within the Whigs party, but also the development and formation of another party. The party that evolved from that political disjointment and disharmony is known as the Republican Party. There you go. Now, I won't go into this. I'll just note this. And this is back to even um, when Drawley said for you to go back to the state of mind of New York and mothers and fathers. And he talked about enforcing the Constitution, because he knew that when you do this, you find this history, and then that's why he said your nationality card will change in your pocket. That's right. It means that your consciousness will change. That's right. And he said, I want active wars, not passive, passive wars. Why? They're the ones that have a tendency to become the traitors mm -hmm. and the conversos, which is why you're catching hell today. Because most of them has been running the temples and your other nigger organizations. Keeping the black codes alive and then marching all over the place complaining about it. <laughs> Hypocrisy to its utmost. Anyway. Now the act of 1871, the ends legacy supporting the coup d'etat of 1861. In civil law, an act is a manifest in writing which states in a legal form that a thing has been said, that a thing has been done, or that a thing has been agreed to. An act of Congress is a piece of legislation that is formally passed by the lawful and de jure members of that body politic who are constitutionally delegated the limited powers by the people via the Constitution to les legislate for the state slash nation. Those said legislative powers are fundamental to the two houses of the Congress, and are defined via Article I of the American Constitution. The designated limitations structured within the properly administered constitutional government are set forth at Article IV, Section 4, Republic, a seriously impacting and important political aspect about the underlying and deviant social political engineering at North America, Al was the clever and targeted 
un uh, underlining of the following three primal documents that rest at the foundation of governance for the United States Republic. These founding documents consist of Treaty of Peace and Friendship, 18, 1786, 1787, amended 1836, two, the Ordinance of 1787, three, the Constitution for the United States of America, 1788, 1789. So when you're looking at this and you talk about constitutional force, when you look at them documents together as one piece. Failure to do so indicates you not only don't know history, but you're incompetent, unqualified, hypocrite, or converso, which is why you're in trouble now, which is why they're still in your lands, your property, and your houses today under its cheap policies because you did not enforce that constitution. So let's not talk about no colors, and let's not talk about no racism. Let's talk about you not carrying out what the property told you to carry out. Now that, that'd be the same as the Northwest Coney Gun. That's exactly what it is. That's exactly what it is. And where do you probably say, what is North America? Northwest of Mexico. Right. It's the Northwest Ordinance. That's right. Yeah, that's right. He gave you keys, but he said the half has not been told. If I told you everything, you go back to sleep. Why? Because if you didn't study, you go to sleep because you'd be passive, thinking that you was told the truth. Then having these people with turbans and fest, I'm like, I love you. Give me two more peanut butter sandwiches. <laughs> and y'all been, you know, doing this to yourself and your children. Meanwhile, step by step, the Europeans encroaching on all your rights, taking all your properties, gentrifying your community, stealing your lands, your inheritance, and everything. And we sit around playing games on belief systems that don't damn work. Yeah, that's right. You pumped out. We, they pumped out to go to wars in, in other people's countries, but they pumped out to stand for true fear. They're full of crap. And so are the nigger leaders that keep on misleading them, that they keep paying. So, we're going to reread three white persons, then we'll answer some questions because of the time period. Proper person, free white person, that you already understood, as you can see, with the Wigamore Party, 1854, the Europeans start calling themselves officially white people. And what do these so-called paid-off nigger black scholars keep doing, talking about, in ancient Africa, the white man came over there and stuff. <laughs> you know, no such thing. They line their keisters off. He, he wasn't even officially called white people to 54. 18. Yeah, please. But they're going to tell you about the ancient gods of Egypt. They're full of crap. Proper personal perspectives and heritability concepts are a must amongst the unconscious moors of the North Gate. A grand new unveiling is needed about that grand portion of history and philosophy which is less disposed or disclosed and is always in order. Critical thinking is a philology standard. Write that down, y'all. Critical thinking is a philology standard. That's why when you come here to the House of Reawakening Mind, we tell you to take pens and paper, because we ain't got time to babysit you. All right? I'll be clear. Yeah, we got it. <laughs> and is not considered an occasionally acceptable or temporarily adopted intellectual option. A disciplined woman or man standing on the square is encouraged and commanded accordingly. <laughs> this character building consciousness is expected of those who know the truth of history as revealed to members of any more science privy council or of adepts. Read that again with me, you all. Any disciplined man or woman, woman or man standing on the square is encouraged and commanded accordingly. This character building consciousness is expected of those who know the truth of history as revealed to members of any more science privy council of adepts. The same erudite standards hold true for those privy adepts and for the honored members, quote unquote, of the various initiated brethren and matrons among the erudite scholars, masters, plenty potentiaries and other members of the elite and their higher schools of learning. High philology standards are demanded of members of these 
of all other Gnostic orders and among the adepts of all well-established secret societies operating at North America, the North Gate, and around the world. All clear. Clear. So when you come to the house of Reawaken the Mind, we didn't come here to babysit you. We didn't come here to make believers out of you. We came to wash you of that belief B shit, skates, dwarf. <laughs> and to deal with knowledge. You don't come here looking for beliefs because you're not going to get it. You're in the wrong place. Are we clear? You don't go to McDonald's for caviar. Don't expect it. All right? Now the point, the one reason, another reason why I wanted to share this with you, and y'all can, you know, go over this in detail on your flash drives. Right. Those who don't have it, you know, Dr. Naima has them for you from the House of Reawakening Minds, and this is amongst other information. And plus, Hassan added tons of more stuff to keep you busy another 15 years. <laughs> you know, so you got 25 years of study on that easily. So there's no reason, you know, even though we're going to work together, we always do because we need to inspire each other. That's right. You got enough stuff on that flash drive to make anybody a scholar. It's not. You understand? It's not. Let's get some work done, y'all. All right. Let's liberate ourselves and liberate the children. Yeah. Mainly by not agreeing to Rome. Period. All right? So... Select definition, and you'll see the European sons and daughters. And keep in mind, keep in mind, note, when did you, Ulysses S. Grant change and adopt the Naturalization Act? What year? 1871. What year? 1871. Uh-oh, 71, 1871. 1870. Yeah, that memory fails. I guess it's now. <laughs> so we're going to Henry Campbell Black's Law Dictionary of Ancient and Modern Jurisprudence. That means it's ancient jurisprudence and it's modern jurisprudence, which means the law didn't change. Are we clear? All right. Free white persons. Free white persons as referred to in the Naturalization Act and as amended by the Act July 14th of 1870 has meaning naturally given to it when it was first used in Statute 103C3. Meaning all persons belonging to the European races then commonly counted as white. And this is where you see that connotation which they added in the Webster's Dictionary. Right. Now it means white That's European. Right. Yeah, That's, right. Mean. That's right. No. That's right. <laughs> Counted as white and their descendants, including such descendants in other countries to which they have immigrated. <laughs> Free white persons includes all European Jews more or less intermixed with people of Celtic, Scandinavian, Teutonic, Iberian, Latin, Greek, and Slavic descent. Free white persons, quote unquote, includes Magyars, Lops, Finns, and the Basques, and Albanians. Free white persons includes the mixed Latin, Celtic, Iberian, and Moorish inhabitants of Spain and Portugal and the mixed Greek, Latin, Phoenician, and North African inhabitants of Sicily, and the mixed Slavic and Tatar inhabitants of South Russia. Free white persons does not mean Caucasian race. Read it again, y'all. Free, Free white, white persons, persons does not mean Caucasian race. race. Read it again, y'all. Free, Free white, white persons person does not mean Caucasian race. race. So you see what your nigger leaders been doing to you? They've been putting you under the black codes and then feeding off of you with little nigger organizations funded by the corporations for tax exempt status to keep the nigger stuff going so they can, how do you say, keep poisoning the well so they can get a job of so-called fil selling you filters. <laughs> That's right. That's exactly what they've been doing. Mm. While all of them is Masons and got a more status. It's fine. And that includes Jesse, Martin, Abernathy, all of them are Masons. 32 degrees got a Moorish fest. 33 degrees. Pretending they don't know these people more. they got all these black nigger organizations. While in secret, they got comfortable jobs. Rome is paying them. And these people is paying them in the name of Jesus. They're getting it from both ends. 
knowing that these people are bound to this continent by heritage and by birthright. Wow. Always did know it. So free white purchase includes all European Jews, more or less, and intermixed with people of Celtic, Scandinavian, Teutonic, Iberian, Latin, Greek, and Slavic descent. Free white persons includes Magyars, Latin, Finns, and the Basque and Albanians. Free white persons includes the mixed Latin, Celtic, Iberian, and Moorish inhabitants of Spain and Portugal, and the mixed Greek, Latin, Phoenician, and North African inhabitants of Sicily, and the mixed Slav and Tartar inhabitants of South Russia. Free white person does not mean Caucasian race. Free white persons does not mean Aryan race or Indo-European races nor the mixed Indo-European, Dravidian, Semitic, and Mongolian peoples who inhabit Persia. A, a Syrian of Asiatic birth and descent will not be entitled, quote unquote, to become a naturalized citizen of the United States as being a free white person, ex parte, and to give you law cases. So as you can see, everybody knows that it's a legal status. You need more to be a free white person. Oh, I'm clear. <laughs> clear. So what they do? Modify the books with reconstructed history to include themselves in the status that don't apply to them. Go ahead. Go they, they gave up something too. Um, uh, it, it says uh, in, in Portugal. Yeah, go ahead. And if one was to just simply Google Portugal right now, it'll say it was established in 1910, and this document refutes that. Just this definition. Of course. So then it would lead one to go and look to see what Portugal was then. Exactly. And this is why, like anybody, uh, anybody looking at severe race uh, uh, snippets that he shares history, mm -hmm. he gives you tons and tons of books on Spain to give you the history that all your so-called scholars know that they've been hiding from you. They hide your history by calling you Spanish. Mm -hmm. You see, Spanish is Moorish history. That's right. You understand? You know, because what, what, what's been happening is that all the Negro black organization trolls been jumping on us trying to act like we made this stuff up. Mm -hmm. See, that's that Taji stuff. He making that stuff up at the round table and sandwiches and stuff. <laughs> but the robber didn't say that. And all that kind of stuff. The robber said, the head has not been told if I told you everything, you go back to sleep. But I was doing this work before I was nationalized. So my mother bought me for the so tough cookies. I don't need them. That's not. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? I can make my own sandwiches. <laughs> and that's the truth. The deal of it is, you know, I work with anybody that, that wants to liberate. That's right. You know, but when they try to take that upper hand on me, hey, the cubs don't need them. I can cook, I can sew, I can build. That's right. Eat, that's right. And I can skate. <laughs> Sometimes. And if, <laughs> But um, now sigil for the Vatican in London and the United States Corporation. The more learned among the people and those exposed to true history via Privy Council organizations are well aware of the social, political, linguistic, and status-oriented facts that the legal phrase free white persons is status, is social status construct and nothing to do with race. Yes. It has nothing to do with race, nor does the phrase free white persons have anything to do with skin complexion. The commonly practiced color code phenotype system established for social engineering at North America must be noted, referred to, and designated toward its true origins. Think about and reflect upon the works of Johann Friedrich Blumenbach, the German naturalist, philologist, a physiologist and anthropologist, also referred to Blumenbach's theory and advocation of the unity of the human race and of the dividing of the race into the five types. His theory holds that the human race is comprised of Caucasian, Mongolian, Malay, American, and Ethiopian. This is the source of Blumenbach's politically engineered social and phenotype control mechanisms. This construct has more to do with political engineering supports than to the actual and factual true explanations expressive of the genetic truths concerning the human family. Thus, the color code paradigm used by Europeans at North America and exported around the world was and is a major, yes, a major contemporary source of the present and contemporary racist representations of the human species 
and was deemed for colonial political purposes, herein lays much of the contrived and resulting ignorance attributed to the human race, inclusive of the negative interplays conjoined it. Now the facts remain that such misrepresentations have been and are promoted at North America for administrating and regulating European colonial servitude purposes. Blumenbach's contrived anthropological paradigm is falsely assumed to be a natural measure for the determining of identity reality source for the human family. This type of misjudgment is usually held as valid only by those among the controlled Asiatic peoples who have been designated as quote unquote colored via the Christian black codes and the related controlling social mechanisms. This designated vassalage class of people unfortunately includes the miseducated and tagged people among the so-called blacks, coloreds, and negroes held under the subjugated slave caste administered by the human trafficking operatives within and under the Franciscan Priesthood's Dogma Corporations. Write that down, Fras Franciscan Priesthood's Dogma Corporations. And, and understand that all you corporate entities, the owners are members of the Roman Curia. So don't forget that. The major thing we must forget or uh, not forget is stop thinking that because these people don't discuss these things that they're not well aware of these. They are groomed well into all of this knowledge, which is the secret of their power base. Amen. The secret of their power base, are we clear? <coughs> but the major thing I think a lot of times our people are intimidated by knowledge that they haven't been exposed to because they keep thinking that other people didn't know this. Right. Just because they don't discuss it. Yes. Yes. Everybody been looking at you with them railroad tracks on your drawers, <laughs> and they're not impressed. You know, so don't think that you're in the bathroom private, singing in the shower. But it's because it's the truth. And we need to grow up, and we need to be honorable. And just because so many of us have punked out, because that's what they have done, punked out, you know, they're willing to fake that they, you know, they're busy worshiping the Lord so they don't want to deal with this kind of stuff. And then sacrifice their babies so they can blame it, blame it on the devil. They ain't getting that off no more. They're not getting that off anymore. And here it is, again. Also, see the Vatican, Rome A, B, London, England, and we're talking about Westminster, all right, from the district. United States Corporation Company operating at North America. And these are all the properties of the Vatican, and the United States Corporation Company is undeniably a crown property entity. These four set established Roman red man social orders are symbolized by a graphic image displaying two horizontal bars or lines, one over the other, with a third layer consisting of three stars as shown. And so you'll see that George Washington also used that in the family crest. And George Washington is the prayer who converted the Moorish bonded bills and the Moorish estates into what you know now as the states. Which are all contemporary Vatican oriented paradigms, false reconstructed history. Are we clear? Clear. So you're home, Dorothy, get it through your head, drink some water, wake up, go take a cold shower, and let's get to work. Any other questions? That's right. And the crown is not the queen of England. No, no. Let's, well, let's talk about this too. I gave you all this too. This is on your flash drive. This is on your flash drive. Good study, that is. This one is on the one. Great. You ready? But I haven't. I haven't been able to confirm it yet, but George Washington, did he change his name to Washington because of the uh, Washita area? No, because uh, basically Washita is, is us in the South. 
mainly when, when they did the Trail of Tears. And that would include, that would include most of the Moorish, um, of the Pawatani Confederation. Some Hanahanasi, but most of us, the Hanahanasi was in the north. But most of from the Pawatani or Pawatani Confederation, collectively are referred to as Washita, which essentially means ancient ones. You know, so it's really a conglomeration of different tribes, not so much one, one section as they try to present it. So when you talk about Washita, you can look at all this. Mm -hmm. you, you understand? Yeah, all right. Thank you. Uh, here we go. Now look at this. Now, this is real quick. And this is why uh, I think I shared with you all the, um, the papers of, um, when uh, they were hanging Matuato's picture in um, an oil painting in the center, in the center floor. And Matuaka, and when they read one of the poems in her honor, that you can see that she was Muslim. But they tell people that she was an Indian, you know, dancing around with loincloth and stuff like that. Also, she was a potentist. Do you understand? And one of the reasons why Ralph had married her, and, you know, the, the, uh, the crown, they had um, two competing words. There's John Smith that they'll write about in the history books, but the deal of it is, is because they knew that the, the women controlled the estates. You know what I mean? And, and the deal was, the deal of it is, if they could get if they could get her, because she was young too, if they could get her, they could get a foothold here, which is where you get Jamestown, Virginia. And this is why the sellout memorials put so much emphasis on the King James version of the version of the Bible. You know, all of this stuff is tied together. Don't ever think that it ain't. You know, and then they tell the children, Michael Waco's name was Pocahontas. To hide the history. You know. But, question. Online but, question. But what I'm saying, to say, I'm saying that to say this. All the scholars already know this. And they stay away from this information because it will tie you back to the land and it will make you recognize this ain't India, we ain't Indians, and your Negro leaders are paid off co and tell pro operatives that most of them, if you're really honest, save your babies. And stop going someplace else fighting wars. Neither, if you're gonna fight a war, if you're gonna be passive, be consistent. Mm -hmm. That's my point. <laughs> Excuse me, I apologize. That's all right, Islam. Speaking of wars, his question. How can a person active in the military correct their status and, and operate via contracts? Well, flow like this. Obama, pres a prayer, president for the United States Service Corporation, didn't he tell you that the American Constitution comes from Muslim law? Yeah. Yeah. Well, isn't the uh, Treaty of Peace and Friendship supersede the Constitution? Yeah. Yeah. Being in the military, don't they take an oath to uh, protect the land, this country, from all enemies, foreign and domestic? That's right. Then the treaty of Tripoli say that the United States was not founded as a Christian country. Um, didn't Obama show the world the true American flag? So look up on your, you talk, talk to your phone, it probably talks, I think you got one. Yeah, you got one of them old flip ones, you got, you got a smartphone? Just talk to it, say, hey phone! <laughs> I just told him about Nyala and shit. <laughs> I want to see Obama with the Amoris flag. And he's showing you the true American flag. What else needs to be done? Except that we need to recognize that we're fighting against our own liberation. We don't fight with bones. Nowhere. So. But you make a contract with him, you don't own your body. Let's put it this way. And I don't, you know, I'm not being hard, I'm just being honest. You can't make a pact with Rome and not be compromised. There you go. So don't think that you or the sign up with Rome get some benefit and he ain't planning on compromising you to hurt somebody else. 
on his behalf so you just as dirty as he is. Woo! That's what they do. Or it hurts you. That's what they do. That's what they do. And then one, one more question while I have the mic. Um, what what was the Oregon area? I'm, I'm not sure if they're asking what it was prior to being called Oregon, or if you know. Oregon is part of the Moroccan Empire. It's just a territory, that's all. That got incorporated. And, and, and keep this in mind so people don't get this twisted. When you go to California, they'll have Queen Khalifa's murals all over California. And if people look at King Queen Khalifa, they don't even know what they're looking at. You know when you talk about Khalif in the Muslim world? Khalifa. It's a power position. Mexico mm -hmm. encompassed most of Khalifa's land, mm -hmm. Nevada, <coughs> New Mexico, Texas, Dara. Our people need to understand what's up. Our concepts about everything, most everything, is incorrect. Right. We got to reattach. And when they're talking about Mexicans acting like they're foreign, they are brothers and sisters. No foreign European tell you that your brothers and sisters are some alien coming across some damn border. They are Moroccans. They are Americans. On the islands, they are Americans. Belize, they are Americans. Brazil, they are Americans. Chile, they are Americans. What point you don't get this? Get your head straight and reject Rome. And those who affiliate with Rome. That's why you're catching it. Keep following after Rome and then complaining and marching and praying. That's what I have to say. If you want to follow after Rome, pay your taxes to Rome, which are really tithe. Be a good, stupid nigger that sells your own people out and other people around the world. Stop complaining. That point they ain't got no business blaming about no devils no more. And talking about Jesus come save him. Why should he come save someone who betrayed him? He came amongst his own, they received him not. They even got a Roman sitting up on the wall talking about that Jesusness. Full of shit. No, I'm not excusing. What else? Like, really? Uh, I don't know what she was saying about like contracts with the government. Right? Like, they say that uh, they say that you can't do business with the government, like con well, so-called government. Um, you can't do contracts with them as an inverted business. So I looked up what an inverted business is, and I was thinking to myself, well, what if you get certified to do contracts with them? Well, who certifies you? That, that's, I already know that though. But, yeah. what I'm, but what I'm saying is, how can you enforce that? You know, how can you be yourself? All right. So, no, let, let's read this. Because my read problem it. is trying to find somewhere to go to jour where it's not a you are, you have the house of reawakening minds in a venue like this, and some more science companies over America. You go to Cato, you can feel like getting your bike is a kind of little ride. You know, grease, grease the barriers and stuff, and you ride up to Canada. Go we'll see Cujo and the family came on in the or you can go out to um, Asbury Park with uh, Grand Chica's Nika and Grand Chic um, Nature Hill. And um, I can name maybe a, a handful of temples that I would proudly send people to. Most others I, I, I still send you to them because one of the rules is send you to the temple because you're going to have to learn. That's the foundation. You have to learn. However, go with an well, open mind. Because remember, some people, when you come in, they're going to try to put you to sleep. <laughs> but if you're awake, you recognize it. That's the point. But understand the temple is right. Some of the administrators are corrupt. The problem is, too many of them are corrupt. You know what I mean? Now, this is the deal. 
When you get, when I say you, I'm talking plural. When you get your concepts correct about what's really going on, those questions you would answer yourself. And because really, if you look at the dichotomy we're dealing with, what we keep looking, and this is what a lot of people keep asking for. How can I stand in two camps and serve two masters and get my check? That's really what they're saying. How can I kiss Rome's ass and, and, and maintain dignity? <laughs> no, really, that's what they're asking. I think we're, uh, me and my friend, we had a lot of discussions, and what we're, the problem we're having is, even if people want to gravitate towards nationalizing and, and, and you know, honoring their mothers and fathers, there's so much corruption. Yes, and it's a choice. Now, when you understand concept, see, this is the whole point. When you understand concept, you can make discernment. Right? Think it like this. If you understand jurisdiction, in personal jurisdiction, subject matter jurisdiction, territorial jurisdiction, right? And the seven points of challenging jurisdiction. Any teacher to anyone, it doesn't matter where they go. All they got to do is use their tools. If they don't have the tools, then they get caught in, well, how do you do this? You don't ask those questions. You use principles. They're called maxims. You study maxims of law, maxims of ethics, right? Constitution, which includes the treaty. That's it. And whenever you're interchanging with someone, you enforce it. Fairly to do so, and you're caught in the gray area, which means you're trying to serve Rome without getting stuck. You're trying to stick your hand in the beehive and get some honey. I'm going to stick my hand in the beehive and get some honey and without getting stung. Well, be ready to get stung. Well, this is what it is. Because remember, if we weren't serving Rome so much through our nigger leaders, he wouldn't have the power. Right. He got it because we keep compromising. Yeah. It's very simple. Run your own to Caesar, run to Caesar's. And if you don't want to, guess what? There's a price to pay. Wow. It is. And guess what? He wants his piece of flesh. You want to be a Negro? It's costly. You want to take your house, your, your apartments. You want to take your bank accounts. That's mm. all his. And your babies. Eat what he wants and throw the rest to some other burger places that people will be eating. Hey, these burgers look good. So they're always red. In in the so-called meat industry, they have what they call melt, and it's really this this red gel that they throw when they grind it up. The aborted babies, cows, horses, rabbits. Some roadkill, not all roadkill, according to how fresh it is. That's why a lot of times the, the, the rangers don't want you, when, car, when deer and stuff get hit, they don't want you messing with them. Right. Because they tested them. Right. And it goes to, <clears throat> to your local, those big yellow signs and stuff. <laughs> and you get two for five. <laughs> the problem is, like when, when, when a friend and I split and I speak, we're basically having a problem of, okay, well, if we nationalize and we learn about our history. Now, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You notice how people always equating nationalization with not having a job or not having a dollar? You know what Charlie said? See, some of these moors would give up their, their noble names and titles for a slice of bread. I say, as long as that dichotomy exists, don't go ahead and serve Rome. That's what I say. We'll, we'll, deal, with, we'll deal with those who render and render the Caesars and Caesars. Because the question you shouldn't even be on the floor. It should. But it, that, it, it does exist. I mean, this is what, this is what I'm saying. If you can't. This is what I'm saying. Reject Rome. Reject Rome. Reject Rome. The estate is already yours. Is that we keep putting Rome first. So we want to serve Rome? Fine. I don't have enough beef with that. Stop looking for a benefit because it ain't going to happen. Listen. 
They trained Fidel Castro in Texas <laughs> as a double agent to displace Batista because the world was finding out about your Christian ministers and politicians who've been raping children in Cuba, which is Isabella, for since they took over Isabella. They got their bars down there, their um, casinos. It's only 90 miles off the land of flowers. So all your goody, goody, two-shoe evangelist preachers and Baptist ministers and politicians, all of them are high priests. Who's going out there raping little girls, 10 to 11, 12 years old. They only want the young ones and little boys. And they come back here to talk about Jesusness. And the people give them some finance and some tithing, which means Roman tax and lie and say it belongs to Jesus. Yeah. So they trained Castro in Texas to take over the uh, Vatican's boy called Batista because it was too ugly because the world was finding this out because women, there was murdering women on the street for trying to protect their little boys and girls from these Christian ministers and politicians. And military, military soldiers were murdering women on the street for protecting their children. They didn't want it out in the world because of the good Christian values. So anyway, so they trained Castro to take Batista's place because it was getting too ugly. And so they put Castro in Isabella. Uh, he didn't go along with the program. He immediately nationalized Cuba. And told these Europeans, GM and all the rest of them, Take your lock, stock, barrel, your dog, and your perverts, and your pedophiles, and your fake, love Jesus, hypocrites, and go to hell off our land. He didn't file no UCC1 financial statement. He didn't authenticate no damn birth certificate. He nationalized. Anybody on the planet that wants to get cancer cured goes to Cuba. Uh huh. Best medical doctors in the world, Cuba. Ninety miles off Florida, any kind of cancer, ninety-five percent cure rate within weeks. Twenty-one days. Here's an industry. This is all I got to say. Now, it's some Kazarians. that was raping Germany. After, after the First World War, the Treaty of Versailles, Germany couldn't have an, a standing army. And they were raping the country, which is what they do. So one day a man, with support from some people here too, and they had some um, gas that they got from New, New Jersey that they took over there in ships from Panama and unmarked ships. And stuff like that. And uh, some man named Hitler nationalized Germany. He didn't file no UCC financial statement or authenticate no birth certificate. He says, What's your nationality? Hmm. We Jews. Oh, good. Go home to Julian. Wherever your mom is, go home. You get off my mom's titty. Boop. Yeah, but we. Boop. Oh, but we. Solve that problem. Oh, you can't do that to my boy. Solve that problem. <coughs> oh, the rest of y'all. Oh. Are you Russian? No problem. Your sovereignty is in Russia. Go home. We got to get our <laughs> land together. Our motherland together. Oh, you from Belize? Go ahead. Oh, you from the Falkland Islands? Go ahead. If they'll let you off them ships, fakers. Go to Cuba. You can't let you off them ship, <laughs> fakers. He said, frog feet, logs, balloons, rafts, backstroke, party's over. You ain't got to go home, but you're leaving here. And those who didn't, they invited them to nice barbecue parties. 
with gas that came from Newark, New Jersey, with 98% of all aircraft engines for the Third Reich was made right in North America. Hitler was a front. He wasn't it. He was a front. A few administrations earlier, there was a guy, one of the biggest families of the uh, pedophile rings and drug trades from them same people. This shit ain't never ended. A uh, brother from Venezuela came to the United Nations and he came up on the podium and he says, I smell sulfur. Them demons with the hedge funds were starting to rape the people of Venezuela and stealing the oil and the sugar. So Chavez nationalized Venezuela. It got away with CIA operations and injecting them with a cancer ray. However, he stood for truth. 1913, no drawings set up old Canaanite temple for the restoration of the estate of the Moors, heirs of the world's largest estate. Commanded the Queen of England to honor her obligation to the treaties and all conventions, etc. And he nationalized us. And here we are, 2018, still debating things that our people don't get yet. They keep trying to serve two masters, which is why we keep catching hell. My point is, if people aren't ready to be themselves, this is not their venue. Right. They want to serve Rome? Yeah, I no problem with it. Go kiss his ass. Just don't come here with the stinky breath. Yeah. Do you understand what I'm serious? But most people are My people. issue is this. How many can we save now? Because mm -hmm. it's just that tight right now. We don't have time to play with hypocrites anymore. This man is liquidating people's estates, people they trying to throw people on the street. And like Drawley said, a beggar people cannot develop the highest spirituality in them. We must stop the bleeding. Yeah. We must carry out the mission of the great prophet Noel Drawley, who said, help me in my great missionary work to bring my people back into the constitutional fold of government enforcing our constitution for the United States of America because it came from Muslim law just as Obama told you. So it ain't a secret. Are we clear? Clear. 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 Uh, on this information, um, this information are foreign to most of us. So now that we, um, now that we get it, how, does, um, how do we apply it to um, others that is outside of this? It applies to everybody. But, uh, okay, because um, stay in the mic. Stay in the mic. If I hadn't, if I hadn't tuned into um, RB Bay or um, Morris Directory, I think this would, information would never be um, um, be here. Many people, many people um, outside here, outside this, mm -hmm. um, don't know about the information. They do. And then how? And then can, how? Can I say this to you? you? How, how? Can I say this to you? You know why, <clears throat> when I'm instructing, a lot of times I'll go to documents, congressional records, and documentation. Now I went to the hardest really issue. That's part of status writing and part of it's my own of research. I cannot emphasize enough. This idea that people don't know this information just because they don't talk it is amazing that people are so damn naive. We are naive. If there's anything I desire is to slay naivety. It's not. The reason I bring you to these things is to let you know everybody know. You know, it's sort of like, here's Europeans kicking us in both asses. And we keep saying, we need to have a meeting to see whether the pain in my ass is from getting kicked in the ass. 
No, I'm, this is what we do. We need to make him understand that we. So, he knows who you are. Everybody on this planet, except these people here, know North America's Morocco. Just like that French Muslim, when Malcolm went over there with that white and black stuff, French Muslim said, to you, Maghreb is evening Salat. Maghreb is Morocco, the most extreme West. You left home, brother. A lot of Europeans know more Islam than you'll ever know. Our concept, our job here is to clean us up. But you know how you do it? Stop thinking people don't know this information just because they ain't talking. You, you, why do you think Marcus Garvey spent his life teaching these people government again? Because he know they don't know fundamental government. Then no Ali came and taught them nationality. We had all the preparation in the world and we still sitting around talking about beliefs. Passive. Problem, they don't know how dangerous mm -hmm. it is. They're getting ready to get eliminated. You know, like when you no, you have an old car you like, and you keep dumping finance in it because you like the car, and you pause it and say, why do you keep fixing that old car? <laughs> All right. I like the car. And after a while, it becomes a money pit. And it's not. Or it's sort of like the old donkey, the old horse. You love that horse, the old donkey, but you can't plow. Um, eats a lot. And he's cantankerous and he bites the children. You love him, but you put him down. You know, the old dog. Love the dog. Everybody plays when he got old, cranky now, he's biting the babies. He, love him, put him down. Same thing with the Negro problem. Meaning that we have to look at it like this. We have to give this to people who want it, people who are willing to do something with it now. We're at a stage in the cycle of the energies, because everything's energy. We're not just talking about the politics, we're talking about the actual energy. Right. We're in an Aquarian, Uranus, Saturn energy that's disallowing this BS to continue, and we're still playing around. Do you understand? If we don't do anything, nature's going to do it. What we're trying to do is get these people to see what's up, because I think people are looking at us and not looking at what's behind us. Right. They can't see, and I understand I'm not knocking them. I'm just appealing the best I can to whatever goodness or spirit is left in them before they get eliminated. They're going to get eliminated. I'm serious. And everyone knows this. We don't. No, we don't. We don't. Especially let me, for Central America. Let me say this to you. Central America don't know. You know what she's going to get on her phone? A bunch of trolls paid off with one of the six-point budgets of the CIA mm -hmm. that follow everything we say to try to dismiss this information. Why are they so worried about us? Why don't they go out there on the hedges and highways and do the work? Drawley said there's more than enough work for everyone to do. Yes, it is. Why are they busy trying to suppress this information? Because it not only exposes Rome, it exposes them who work for Rome. Because once you understand the rules of the game, you know, once we show you the deck is marked, you don't have to still say, how come every time I go down the last thing, I can't come back with that Corvette? Because it's rigged. At what point you don't get it? Save bus fare. Better yet, don't damn go. <laughs> Find something to do. You know, I'll say this to you. I'll say this to you. Because we only got a couple minutes, we gotta go. There are two crowns, this is back to the crown. There are two crowns that come to mind when natural people of the land take into consideration their forced bandage suffered, what we're talking about right now, under the intersocial affairs invoked by colonialism. The most poignant issues involved, it involved the social, economic, and political problems that have and do now plague and hinder the human family in these days. Many of the torch wars and social, economic, and political abuses and suppressions of no are presently the norm among Aboriginal people suffering the negative and injurious effects of European colonialization, colonization in the Western Hemisphere, and across the planet. One of the crowns of concern has been the Queen of England. So we're talking about the Vatican, we're talking about the Middle Star. And this is where everybody always looks, right? right. 
So when y'all be doing these, when you see them gentrifying communities and them law firms be sending people those 192s, those so-called fake foreclosures, yeah. they're coming from the crown. Not from some court. Not from some legitimate court. The most poignant issues involving social, economic, political problems that have and do now plague and hinder the human family these days, many towards wars, and social, economic, and political abuses and suppressions of note are presently the norm among Aboriginal people suffering the negative and injurious effects of European colonial or colonization in the Western Hemisphere and across the planet. One of the crowns of concern has been the Queen of England and the arbitrary practices related to the Popes of Rome, the Inquisition, and the Unum Sanctum Church Bull policy enforcements, etc. Because this is what this is what all scholars know that's happening that the nigger leaders and some sheeps and other people claim to love Prophet no Drali sitting around talking about racism. That's a design of diversion to keep you away from what's happening to you. This is what's happening to you. It ain't racism. You ain't poor because they don't like the color of your skin. It's Unum Sanctum. And it's run by the Crown Church, the Circle Church in Westminster, London. And the Circle Church is your banksters and your lawyers. That's why in your Zodiac Constitution registered in the Library of Congress, it says when you hire a lawyer, an attorney, you give them your birthright. That's right. They're your enemies. And everybody knows it. Go look up Investigation into the Bar Association 1952 House Committee Report. And I'll tell you who they are. Anyway, so the Pope's in Roman Inquisition, the Cycle of Church Bull, enforcement, etc. The other crown less discussed is the Crown Temple and its past and present membership and operations. Truth needs no apology. The feudal law governmental and judicial systems operating within the jurisdiction of the United States, which are artificial person abstracts and private corporate entities functioning at both the federal and at the local and state levels, these corporate and legacy entity constructs having British Crown colony origins are now owned by the Crown, which is a private and foreign power. Before jumping to conclusions about the Queen of England, or about the royal families of Britain owning the USA corporate entity known, know that this is a different crown. And the, this order is fully exposed and explained below. We are specifically referencing the established Templar Church, known for centuries by the world as the crown, quote unquote. From this point on, we will also refer to the crown as the crown temple or the crown Templar, and that when one hears about or references any of these forms, it's known that all three are synonymous. Mm. So you got to understand these things so that you don't get twisted, because they'll change names, and then you think that history has changed. The same game is played. A Templar is a member of the Niceno-Constantinopolitan Creed Religious and Military Order that is also called Knights Templars, Knights of the Temple, and poor soldiers of the temple. The order was founded around 1118 and organized on the land at Jerusalem, an ancient city at Canaan. Canaan is also known as Palestine. And the area of Jerusalem, Palestine, has since 1948 been politically designated as a part of the contemporary body politic and political state now called Israel. The Temple Church. First, we will note and take account of a little historical background. The Temple Church was built by the Knights Templar in two parts, the round and the chancel. The round church was consecrated in 1185 and was modeled after the circular church of the Holy Sepulchre, which is located in Jerusalem. The chancel was built in uh, 1240. The temple church serves both the inner and middle temples, see below, and is located between Fleet Street and Victoria Embarkment at the Thames River. Its grounds also house the Crown Offices at Crown Office Road. This temple church is outside any canonical jurisdiction. The master of the temple church is appointed and takes his place by sealed non-public patent without jurisdiction, without part of induction or institution, attorneys. All licensed bar attorneys are really attorneys. 
who are doing business and operating at North America and under the United States jurisdiction. These attorneys owe their allegiance to and give their solemn oaths to pledge in pledge to the Crown Temple, quote unquote. Their fidelity to the Crown is the established fact and stands as the binding rule, whether the bar members admit it or not, or whether realizing the oath bound obligatory fact or not. This fundamental truth is simply due to the fact that all bar associations throughout the world are signatories and franchises to the International Bar Association, which is located at the ends of court at Crown Temple. The Crown Temple itself is physically located at Transory Lane behind Fleet Street in London, England. Although the bar members may vehemently deny it, because they're lying asses, or, I'm stopping. Not wanting the public to know, all bar associations in the United States, such as the American Bar Association, the Florida Bar, and the California Bar, ETC, as examples, have direct ties, these without exceptions, as with the other bar associations are franchises to the Crown. It's on your flash drive, you can finish reading this. Anyway, I want to thank you all for coming out here to the House of Reading Your Mind. to get those adult classes and, and learn those mysteries, um, you want to be here tomorrow at 6 p.m. for um, Grand Sheik's son, Father Hamble Bay. And let me say something real quick on Hamble Bay. There were some comments made, there were some comments made on the Facebook page about a, a class he did last week when he wouldn't, a couple weeks ago, when he wouldn't let people film. I want to say this. If you're going over the foundation, of how to levitate. If you're going over the foundation of vibration and how to how to move and coexist. And you're talking over some secrecies of being a magi. It's not for everybody to see. He has to be, he has to protect. But the experience when you came here and the information that he presented about the power that we have and what he demonstrated right here in this room, most won't believe, you got to see. But it's not to be videotaped. Well, he, he actually um, has decided that he will videotape, but he may cut off at certain parts at the end. But he gonna cut off I didn't ask him to, because I'm not bowing to pressure on Facebook. But um, he texted me himself and said that. But um, thank you for that. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm all the way, sis. There's nothing to be, nobody's afraid, but we got to be cautious because we're at war. Absolutely. We're in a war. Absolutely. A venue, because they're not going to be letting them travel. How much for the flash drive? 